Good afternoon and welcome to Adamson Stadium here in sunny California, Pennsylvania. My name is Peyton Trollinger and alongside of me is my color analyst, Jonathan Sakaguchi. How are you on this beautiful day? I'm doing good, Peyton. And as you said, Ed, it, it's a beautiful day, a great eight moment in here for um, our Cal U faithful or, for, or the, the tribute to 9-11. And it's been 20 years since that at all went down on but now, oh, let's get ready for some football all oh, as we get ready for this cross-divisional PSAC matchup. Yes, the pregame festivities are almost over here at Adamson Stadium. We're waiting for both teams to come out, and we're just about underway here in Adamson Stadium in California, Pennsylvania. Yeah, uh, the captains are meeting at midfield, so we're going to get our coin toss here. Here. We got uh, captain number five, Noah Mitchell, for... The Vulcans, we have number 53 for the Vulcans as well. I'm not seeing a name. 53. Uh, and we got number 30 as well, and number three for the Vulcans. Eric Hunt Hunnick is number 53. E Noah Dillo, number 30. And number three, Jamal All Martin Jr. And for the Bald Eagles, Meeting Mitchell at center field is number one. We do not have a name for That's on the roster. Nizir Taylor. And we also have a few more captains for the Bald Eagles. We got number eight, Israel Xavier. Number seven, Marvin Maddox. And number 16, Jack Coletti. And now here's the California Vulcans entering the field. And the Vulcans paying tribute to the Juice, a player that passed away last year. Here as they are bringing his number 77 in red jersey to the field with them. Cal U, who, who, who is going to get the ball to we'll start the game as Lockhaven deferred or to start. I wonder if that's any sort of strategy for the Bald Eagles. Maybe they're very confident in their defense. I would be too, considering the last game that the Bald Eagles played, they won 20 to nothing over Lincoln. And, you know, the Lincoln did not, you know, they just didn't, they couldn't get the offense going. And the defense for Blockhaven held them. And I'm sure the Cal U offense is very eager to get the first points against that defense, don't you say? Yeah, but we also got a, a, a little side note that at Lockhaven's offense only put up 250. He some um, yards of total offense last week. So that's you got to wonder, or did the defense come up a bit bigger? How did the offense do for? It? That is also another way to put it. You know, I'm looking at the stats right now. Like you were saying, that Lock Haven the offense only generated about 215 yards of offense. Cal U's offense generating about 350. It's definitely a big jump in numbers right there. So let's see how this game plays out today. Lockhaven getting the kickoff team ready. Hunter has the kicker or wearing number 86 in your programs today. And the Vulcans are kicking or going to take the ball all left to right on your radio dials for you listening in on, on Power 92. All righty. And here we go. Adamson Stadium, Lockhaven versus California. And we are underway. That ball is a little bit too far for Noah Mitchell to get. So, it's going to be a touchback. Uh, the returner on that one, one was number six, Kyle Brunson. And oh, my apologies. That was Kyle Brunson. That was my fault. Let's look a little bit at the tail of the tape here. Last time that these two teams met, Cal U won 56 to 24 that was back in November 14th 2015 as the last time that these two teams Ever have played off, please set the play clock to 40 seconds and start right now leave it at 25 we'll go on my signal and the uh, ref making an announcement to the press box and let's get Cal U's first drive underway here at Adamson Stadium it's Mitchell in the pocket he's in the shotgun He's going to hand it off to his running back, and he's going to pick up a first down for the Vulcans. That was is the, he transferred 
Or running back act number six, Kyle Brunson. Kyle Brunson. In, Brun in your or programs. Got a lane up the middle. Oh, the defense has got a gap. Let's take a look at the starters here now oh, for Cal U. Ooh, as we said, Brunson, the starting running back. Act. Act. Noah Mitchell, your starting quarterback. Act. Tyson Hill, oh, one of your star receivers here for Cal U again. And here we go. Cal U's second drive. Mitchell in the pocket. Misses his receiver. That was intended for, for number zero. Oh, can't. Um, for Tarrant. Uh, Tarrant, excuse me. Pass intended for Cam Tarrant. Pass is incomplete. Vulcans will take over second and 10 from their own 36 yard line as they're awaiting the call from Coach Dunn. And looks like Cal U's going to come out, out and do what they did last week. A lot of run, run and go. Oh, and, a, and quick big short passes. That's what uh, that got them the victory last week against Fairmont State. Yes, Cal U definitely has the weapons to get that done. They got Kyle Brunson as the running back. They have a lot of other weapons, uh, not even mentioning Tyson. Uh, Tyson Hill as a receiver. Looks like we're going to get called a and timeout. Oh, no. Noah saw something he didn't like Aiken and just threw up the tee. We're going to have a timeout for the Vulcans, as you said. Let's take a look, look here now at uh, the players to watch for. Or, for, or Cal U. It's going to be one of the big DBEs. Noah Dillo. He was a big factor last week. He for, or Cal all in their victory. He over on Lockhaven side, hey, another er, big defensive player, Aaron Shane Scott, uh, had a couple of tackle holes for loss last week against Lincoln University. So he's going to be a guy that we have to watch out for or here er, on this Bald Eagle defense. And no, speaking more of uh, on uh, Noah Dillo, uh, in one game he has seven solo tackles and he has six assisted tackles. So he's definitely going to be a player that Lockhaven is going to be watching. And as for uh, Shane Scott, Shane has six tackles, two assists, eight all together. And I'm sure Cal U will be watching him as well. Shane Scott wearing number 16, Noah wearing number 30. Speaking of number 16, he's on, on the far side of your screen right now. And here we go. Replay of second down. It's going to be a handoff to his running back. That's Brunson. Stopped behind the line of scrimmage by a host of Bald Eagles. Going to be about a loss of three. It's going to end up being third and 13 for the Vulcans. Yeah. Uh, third down and 11. Oh, going to be a loss of one on the play. A, a Brunson and got moving a little bit, but couldn't get, just couldn't find the open lane he needed. It, but, uh, good way to keep his feet moving for and because that could have been a bigger loss there mm -hmm. Cal you still looking for that big first play to break this Eagles defense so far Lockhaven has stand stood strong Mitchell in the pocket shotgun he's gonna drop back he's gonna run it himself looking and that's a completed pass to number nine for the Vulcans and that is Jaquay Jackson. That's going to be enough to move the sticks for the Vulcans. Jackson and was a big factor last week. Caught, made three big catches for or Cal U doing that victory against Fairmont. Uh, and once again, and picking up where he left off last week. And the Vulcans taking over on their own 47-yard line like with a fresh set of sticks. Mitchell. He's going to hand it off to his running back. That's Brunson. He's going to pick up about, looks like, six on the play. Yeah, Brunson, and who's a big bat, big back for Cal U, and it's going to be a big factor here this year for him. That's second and five now for the Vulcans. Noah, Noah Mitchell waiting the call for from Coach Dunn. Looks like he's got it. He's going to stay in the shotgun back to his left. Vulcans now in Lockhaven territory on their own 40 on the Lockhaven 48 yard line. Brunson, again the ball Brunson running the ball up the middle again, pick up a yard for the Vulcans, third and four. Yeah, that was Han Hanson Johnson and the big D lineman in for Lockhaven on the tackle. Good move, good stop by that um, because if they did, if Brunson found a lane, he might have burnt hurt this defense. 
Yeah, I'm sure that Lock Lockhaven's got Brunson's number all in their head, and they know that he's a dangerous player. No Mitchell in the pocket, and he just he gets the pass to Brunson, but Brunson cannot hold on, and that's going to bring up a fourth down for California. And that takes a lot of wind out of Cal. You say it was this early. You're already inside right, their 45-yard line, only to get the, it stopped. Here we go, the punt formation now for California. And taking the punt. Joseph Wells. Nice snap and nice punt for the Vulcans. A lot of hang time on that one. Down the field and the ball will be down a little before the 20, probably around the 18 yard line, the Bald Eagles will take over. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be spotted about the 17 yard line. From the 18. Well, well you were right, right, Peyton, on the 18 yard line. So now let's take a look, look at the Lock Haven starters here. Here, quarterback act to watch out. Well, four, or the East Bald Eagle Oils is going to be Ethan and Persa. Uh, running back uh, Dante Graham and top slot receiver Justin White will and be the guys to watch. And a nice little run play for the Bald Eagles to start this possession off. Pick up about two on the play. It'll be about second and eight now for the Bald Eagles. Jake Miller or er, er four down, or Cal U with the stop there. And Persa is going to line up in the shotgun. He's got a back to his left. Hand it off to the back. And he'll pick up a few yards on that play. I'm trying to see who that was. That was number eight. That was DeAndre Wakefield for the Bald Eagles. I'm sure he's going to be a weapon that they're going to use quite frequently in this game. Yeah, Blockhaven sw well, will switch its running back acts left and right throughout this game. Aim Wakefield, Old, and Graham will be the guys to watch out for. And it is a third down for Lockhaven, the first third down they've faced this game. Let's see if they can convert here. Cal, you in the dime. Persa dropping back. He completes the pass to his wide out. Number, that's number 14, Chris Hicks. I think he, he's going to either be just short or he might have it. it, it we'll see here. He looks and it looks like that is going to be yep. going to be a first down now for the Bald Eagles. What a way to convert from Hicks catching the ball. What a pass from Persa in that uh, pressured situation right there. Yeah, it looks like he just got enough forward progress to move the move the chains a little bit further I was, down the field. It was definitely close. Persa. Hands it off to his back, but he's stopped in the backfield by number 40 for the Vulcans. Gabe Miller, or once again. Miller on his stop. And that's Gabe Miller, as you said. Back him up about a yard. It'll be second 11 now for Lockhaven. Yeah, count. Oh, you swarm to the ball once again, and, and like they did last week. Let's see if they can keep this pressure up the entire game. Bald Eagles taking over from their own 28-yard line, second and 11. Looks like they're going to go with that wing T offense. He's going to go up the middle, and it's a fumble recovered by Cal U, and the Vulcans have the ball back. That'll be number five, Kit Von Orman, and on the recovery. Hey, take a look at the replay here. Here is, it looks like it was just a bit of a shaky handoff. It looks like Graham did not have full, full um, uh, uh, what's the word I want to have here? Or, uh, here, uh, protection of the football. Oh, it made the first contact, and that was enough to bump the ball out. And now it's Cal U's ball deep inside Bald Eagle this territory. Is a very dangerous spot for Lock Haven to be in. We know that Noah Mitchell can throw that ball, and we know Brunson can swing it. And a completed pass to Brunson from Mitchell. Enough to pick up the first down and a tad bit more. Yeah, I think Noah was looking for something further downfield as we take a look at the replay here. Here, and as Brunson and gets a lane and start or moving his feet, eating, started bringing that bald eagle defense with him. Um, and now it's first and 10 with inside the 15 yard line of, of Lockhaven. 
This is amazing field position for the Vulcans. I'm sure Coach Dunn is going to want to capitalize on this opportunity. Now, oh, going off of last week, this is how, how you scored the first time. Brunson on the handoff, fighting for some extra yardage. He's finally brought down by a horde of bald eagles. Yeah, uh, and that's a uh, that's how old, old Brunson moves. Is he is a big back? Heck, he's got some strong legs, so he's going to uh, drag that defense with him. Second and eight now for the Vulcans inside of the Lock Haven red zone. Nine minutes left to go in this contest, still scoreless, although we might be seeing a score here very soon. Mitchell motioning the receiver. He's in the shotgun, dropping back the pass. He fires it to his receiver and he catches it. That's Tyson Hill on the reception. He's just short of the touchdown. It's going to be brought down at the one yard line. What a pass by Mitchell and what a reception by Hill. Yeah, take a look at the replay here. Or, or that crossing and pattern once again. No, oh, Mitchell finding his favorite tar target, Tyson Hill. Oh, right there in the flats. That's for a, a gain of, of about 12 yards. They're going to go with this heavy offense. Vulcan setting up fast. And he is in the end zone. California touchdown. Once again, going back to Brunson in, in, in that big that big running back and that, he, that heavy set formation as we take a look at the replay hey, here. As Brunson and gets in the backfield, Gould finds that little, little spot and, they, and right into the end zone he goes. Very short game, but very much needed for the Vulcans as they strike first. And on the PAT tap was going to be number 82, Anthony Bitco. It's up. And we got. And it is good. Well, we got a flag Vulcans. on the play. Vulcans up seven nothing. And when we come back, we got a flag on the play. Well, there is a flag on the play. Let's see what this flag is about first before we send it to break. I think they're going to call all offsides on on Lockhaven because there was a couple guys that moved up front. Still awaiting the call from the official now. Offside on the defense, be declined. And Johnny, Still you were right. It was an offside Still on the Bald Eagles. Eagles. Touchdown Still will stand. And we're going to send it to break from Vulcan Football on CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM WCAL. The Cal U Vulcans are back on the gridiron this fall, and CUTV and WCAL give you the best seats in the house. September 2nd at Fairmont State. September 11th versus Lockhaven. September 18th versus Millersville. September 25th at Edinburgh. Homecoming, October 2nd versus Mercyhurst. October 9th at Gannon. October 16th versus Clarion. The Coal Bowl, October 23rd at IUP. October 30th versus Seton Hill. November 6th at Slippery Rock. November 13th at Bloomsburg or the PSAC title game. All games are live on CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM, WCAL. And welcome, welcome back here to Adamson Stadium here in California, Pennsylvania. Cal U is up on the Bald Eagles 7 to nothing. And the kick was ran back, taking about the 25-yard line. The Bald Eagles was set up. Yeah, that last drive for Cal U, three plays, 25 yards after the fumble Bull on the play. And Cal U, U capitalized it as we look back here, here on that last replay play of what on the touchdown score, or Brunson with the. The touchdown on score or from two yards out or as we get ready for or the second drive here for Lockhaven. And Persa setting up in the shotgun for the first play of the drive. He's going to hand it off to his running back again. I'm sure he's going to be holding on to that ball a little bit tighter this time. Yeah, Whitehead. Graham the ball carrier. Or excuse me, Run Graham holding on to the ball this time. I'm going to, we might see him a little bit more now old after and that. Uh, second down and eight. After the fumble he had. From Whitefield. Be a gain of about two. Lockhaven second and eight now. Persa again in the shotgun. Got a back to his left. Going heavy reset left side. 
He's dropping back in the shotgun. Oh, and I thought it was going to be a completed pass, but it is an incomplete pass intended for number one of the Bald Eagles. Intended for White. For White on the play. And it was incomplete. Third down now for the Bald Eagles. Yeah, I was looking for or, or Justin White on the play, hey, but a little bit of contact there forced the ball out. And the Eagles are going to spread it out here on third down. Third and eight, Persa in the, in the gun. He's facing some pressure, and he's going to be brought down and sacked on a play by number three, Jamal Martin Jr. And what a big play by the Vulcans. Let's take a look back at this replay. Yeah. Vulcans really pressuring the Bald Eagles. Yeah. And Martin Jr. was able to get back there and make that stop. And this is what happened last week. Cal U, U who bringing the the uh, heat on on the defense and it's adding pressure. Or Jamal Martin and Noah Dillo back there once again. We're gonna be calling their names all night. And the Bald Eagles are gonna punt it away. And it that's number nine receiving the punt for the Vulcans. That's Adam the, DeGregorio. He's gonna make it a fair catch. No, that was a from Lloyd Jackson on the uh, return there, there Peyton. And so Cal U getting decent in starting field position and from their own 31. And now this is where Cal U got on uh, the offense started last year, or last week, excuse me. And, and after a quick fumble and score, or Cal U got the ball back, back on a three and out. Oh, and started it once again. Mitchell under center. He's going to take over from his own 31-yard line with a fresh set of downs. Going to go in the ace formation for er, Cal U. Mitchell stepping back, firing, and he's open. That's number nine on the on the reception. Touchdown, Vulcan! Once again, Jacoy Jackson making it his name known in the the stat sheet. The catch and throw is he got hit. At Noah Mitchell, as we look here on the, the replay, Jackson and had about a five yard step on and the defender there er, as he takes it to the house from about 60 yards plus. What a play by 14 Jackson. 14 nothing, Cal U. What a play, what speed by Jackson that we saw. What a throw by Mitchell, he just floating it to Jackson and easily coming away with the six points. And the kick is up, and it is good. As we send it to break, 6.52 left to go in this first quarter. Vulcans are up 14-0. You are watching Vulcan Football on CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and WCAL 91.9 FM. Vulcan Volleyball is back, and you can catch all the action with CUTV and the PSAC Network. After a year away from the court, the Vulcans are set to try and get back to the top of the PSAC. A full slate of action versus such PSAC opponents, Gannon, Mercyhurst, Edinburgh, Clarion, Seton Hill, Slippery Rock, IUP, and Pitt Johnstown. Every home game will be live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium in beautiful, sunny California, Pennsylvania. Vulcans are up on the Bald Eagles, 14 to nothing as they kick the ball back to Lockhaven. And Lockhaven will set up possession from their own 25 yard line. First and 10, gonna try this one again. Let's look back at this replay before we cut it to break. That was Jaquay Jackson on the touchdown for the Vulcans. Beautiful float pass by Mitchell and beautiful reception. Yeah, one play, a 62 yard earth to the house. Oh, and what a stop by the Vulcan defense. That's number 55 getting back in the backfield. And that is 
Dante Graham, um, once again, he was another guy that was in that made a lot of noise last week for Cal U as they, they were up big in some of those games. And getting back in the backfield for the Vulcans was Gerald Brown. A big loss for the Bald Eagles. It's going to be second and long. Handoff to the running back. And, he, and that's number 25 on the carry for the for the Bald Eagles. It's back Ram. Noah Dillo oh, and Silva uh, on the carry. Silva, a uh, guy we didn't call a whole lot of last week, but making his name aimed no owned again today. And he was stopped at the line of scrimmage, and we heard from the public address announcer that was Dillo also helping out with that tackle. We talked about him a little earlier in the broadcast as a player to watch, and you want to keep continuing to watch him. He's number 30. Third down now for Lockhaven. and they're deep in their own zone. Persa dropping back, feeling the pressure, and it's going to be an incomplete pass. Pass is incomplete. And he, Persa got uh, rocked as he threw on that one. On good coverage by Cal U as we look here or back at the replay. Hey, that is Persa rolling, 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 looking for a man, and then boom. Here comes the hammer down on that one from the Vulcans defense. And it's fourth down now. And the intended target on that was Brandon Siski. He couldn't hold on to it as it hit the ground. So now Lockhaven, again, punting the ball away back to California. May I mention that every time California has gotten the ball, they have scored. Jackson met immediately by the punt return, by the punting team. That was number 80 making the tackle, Joseph Wells. Yeah, let's take a look down here at Cal U's upcoming schedule. Oh, Peyton, and and right now next week we'll be back here at Abbotson Stadium um, as we host Millersville. Then we go on our, the road for our first official old PSAC West matchup against Edinburgh. Or we'll head off the home for Mercyhurst, off the Gannon, Quarian, and the Cobalt, or Seton Hill, Slippery Rock, and Bloomsburg, or possibly the PSAC title game. California having a very tough schedule ahead of them. They're going to have to stay focused. And meanwhile, on the field, Tyson Hill gets the reception, but he's tackled in the backfield by the defensive line of the Bald Eagles. Yeah, uh, looking for the uh, end around as we look at look here at the replay. A, but Tyson Hill just couldn't find a lane to help out on that one. Nope, and it'll back the Vulcans up about four yards. It'll end up being second and 14. There is a flag on the play. Ref saw something that we didn't. It's going to be an illegal substitution call going against California. It's going to back him up a few more yards. Yeah, uh, simple mistakes like that. Uh, you cannot uh, do. Ooh, ooh, can't, oh, oh, had one guy too many when they broke the huddle on the field. Oh, this coach done in, on near side here er, asking for and for an explanation. He thought he had all of his all eleven guys on the field. Well, that needed to be out there. And here we go. Vulcan's gonna try to forget about that and start this offense again here at their own 41 yard line. Spreading it out. Empty backfield for Mitchell. Dropping back the pass, and he catches it. And that's Jaquay Jackson again. He's gonna go out of bounds, stopping the clock for a little bit. Yeah. And that's another big catch by Jackson. And good for about oh, 20 yards on that one. And getting him up over midfield and into who deep inside the uh, Lockhaven territory after getting backed up on the last two. That was enough for the Vulcan first down, obviously. And now California on the strike again. Mitchell scrambling in the pocket on the near side. He finds what a catch by Jaquay Jackson. Going, doing his Antonio Brown on impression. His Antonio there. Holmes impression on the sidelines. Yeah. And, that, and that's enough to move the chains. Take a look at the replay here, guys. As you see, Jackson keeps his feet and bounce long enough, pulls it in, and keeps both feet and bounce, actually. The, and gets the first down on, and we're back inside the 15 again. California's just been ruthless. This offense has just been striking without mercy. 
Mitchell in the shotgun. He's going to hand it off to his trusty back. And he's still on his feet. Touchdown, California! And that's Eric McCann rushing in for the Vulcan touchdown. And that's six more points for the Vulcans. What do you think about that? Oh, man. And they are just running away with this one here in the first quarter as we take a look at the replay. Hey, hey, uh, as they got a final lane and good blocking up front by the Vulcans. For, and it's opened up the running lane for Cal U. Good to get it in the score. It's 21 and nothing. And Bitco going to attempt the extra point here. We wait. The kick is up. And it is good. The Vulcans with a little under four minutes to play here in this first quarter. California over Lock Haven, 21 nothing. You're watching Vulcan football on CUTV Sports 1. PSAC Network and WCAL 91.9 FM. Looking for something to do? Then don't miss the 2021 Health Fair. This year, the Health Fair will be on Wednesday, October 6th in the Convocation Center Arena from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. There will be free STD testing, a blood drive, prizes, free health screens, flu and COVID vaccines, giveaways, and much, much more. Don't miss the excitement. Be at the Convocation Center on October 6th for the 2021 Health Fair. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium in sunny California, Pennsylvania. We have on the kickoff return, we have a couple flags here on the play and a shaken up Vulcan. Let's see what these flags are about. Yeah. Turn it down to our officials here. While we got a little bit of break in the action, let's take a look back at this replay here. And that was Eric McCann the second who rushed that in for the Vulcans, making it 21 nothing for California. Yeah, we're waiting to see what the, the call is here. Here, Peyton, let's take a look, look at the PSAC schedule all for today, A what we got going on. Currently, a ship lead, Shippensburg leads Edinburgh 20 to six right now. Oh, thank you to my sister Abigail oh, up at Edinburgh. And both penalties going against Lockhaven. That's going to holding move and block in the back. That's going to put them within the ten yard line, possibly First on the, from the seven. from the seven yard line. That's not going to be a good ideal place to start for the Bald Eagles. Now, uh, and back to the schedule for, for this week in the PSAC. The big matchup this week, Peyton. I'm looking at that is Edinburgh at Kutztown on playoff implicants right off the bat. Here we go, Persa in the shotgun. He's feeling the pressure. He's going to throw it away, and that's going to be caught for the Bald Eagle first down. Looks like that was number 88 that caught that and hauled it down, and that's Alex Lance. Beautiful catch on the play. He's but able to bring on. it right back down. There hold on a moment, Peyton. we got a flag on the play. There hey, are right. flags on the play. Let's So this might down. be coming back. Now, Let's our spotter here uh, or Cam here, here, so it was 89. Jesse Engel oh, with the catch for, or. Personal foul, face mask. It's gonna be a face mask call going against the Vulcans. It's, this is actually gonna get moved up yeah, this for another for first seven. down. Number seven, Marvin Maddox makes the linebacker or on, or get on his hand caught in a cookie jar. Take a look at the replay here. There's Perso is scrambling and finds a receiver to make the catch and right there at the end and he did get his hand up on that face mask so not a good look for the Vulcans as Lockhaven is pushing they're on their own 45 yard line first and 10 Persa drops back he's going to take it himself he couldn't find anyone open and he's going to slide for a gain of about eight second and two so it's going to be a, a second down Second and four, or from the Cal U 49. So he got he got into Cal U territory, or yeah, but that, uh, that sometimes that's all you can do. Ooh, if you ooh, you get busted coverage. 
And good, uh, good looks on the Vulcan defensive backs for covering the open receivers. And Parsa didn't have anyone to throw to, so he made the right call and took it himself. And here we go. Down goes Parsa in the backfield, sack by the Vulcans. And that's number 54 coming up big for the Cal U Vulcans. That's Derek Corboy. And it's a big loss, taking them back to where they started. Corbo Third and 10. Corbo uh, he was a big factor last week. It was in the face of the quarterback and the running backs all week last week. Eek, so oh, I'm not surprised that he's back at, back at it again today. Ne this Vulcan defensive line has not really been stopped. Lockhaven still trying to find an answer for it, but they better hurry up. Persa in the shotgun, firing downfield. Oh. oh, and it's almost picked off. That have been back-to-back -back weeks that uh, Cal U ha had tip drill receptions of some sort, or, or I shouldn't say receptions, catches, is as we almost saw all a, all a tipped interception and by Cal U. Ooh, but just a too far out of the defender's hands. And that pass was intended for number 21, Kyrie McBride. He just could not hold on to the ball, and he was covered by Nazir Taylor. Yeah, Big back. play for Taylor getting that ball. At least, if he couldn't punt. intercept it, then he at least tipped it away. That's all that really matters. Nice punt here, Air, uh, Jesse Funk. Got uh, Cal U inside uh, their own 10-yard line to start. So oh, let's take a look now, Al Payton, at the uh, schedule for Lockhaven. And it's not, believe me, it's not going to be an easy one for them. Um, um, as they will be go going to Slippery Rock next week for a, a 6 o'clock start. Or, and then and their or East Division play starts again. And it's East Strasburg, or Millersville, Shepherd, or at Bloomsburg, Kutztown, Old Westchester, or home at Shippensburg, and their last cross divisional play uh, again, and Seton Hill. None of these schedules are easy schedules by no means. Only the best teams will come up for the postseason. Vulcans starting within the 10 yard line. Mitchell giving it to a. Running back up the middle Brunson for a yard or two. That's Looks like that was Brunner on the carry. That was Brunson once again, and and he hit the line, run it, and and had his legs turning there for or at least a gain, you know, something. And Cal U taking over from their own nine-yard line. They definitely want to get out of. This, uh, this zone right here, get some yards down the field. Mitchell, PA pass, he's gonna give it to the receiver. It's number eight making the catch. That is Jaquay, that, no, no, Israel that was Cam, Xavier. That was Cam Tarrant, number zero here on the program. Um, with the three yard gain as we're under a minute here in the first quarter. Vulcans trying to get another play here. Third down and five now. 40 seconds left to go in this first quarter. Vulcans up 21 to zero. Mitchell in the shotgun back to his left. He's gonna drop back for the pass. He's looking, caught by Jackson, and he's still going. Juking out the defenders. He's finally gonna get brought down at the 35 yard line. And that's enough for the California first down. What a catch by Jackson, don't you think? Yeah, Cal, you take a look here at the replay hey, as Jackson makes the catch. Bounces off a couple of defenders and starts looking for his way through. Ooh, we got 15 seconds left here in the first quarter. Vulcan still trying to run another play. Gonna give it to the back. It's gonna be a flea flicker to Cam Tarrant. He's on the outside. He's still going. He finally gets pushed out of bounds at around the 50-yard line. Uh, flag is down at the 45-yard line. So let's see what this flag is about. And we'll find out here in one second. And as the clock has expired for the first quarter. Still awaiting the call. The ref referees discussing the call, making sure they make the right one. Yeah, that, that was a late flag on that one. Could be... 
delayed hit potentially on Lockhaven. Excuse me, it was a holding call going against California and Jackson's run will be brought back. And it's gonna be the end of the first quarter now. Vulcans up 21 to nothing on the Vulcan football on CUTV Sports 1, PSAC Network, 91.9 FM. We'll see you after the break. If you are looking for a Christian club that features Bible study and spiritual nourishment, then come find your family with New Life Cal U. Swing by Oasis every Tuesday at 7 p.m. in Italy 321 to explore faith through Bible study, games, and fellowship. Or stop by Converge on Thursdays at 7 p.m. in the Natali Rotunda to make friends and enjoy life through casual hangouts. Everyone is welcome. Connect with New Life Cal U at www.newlifecalu.com backslash connect. Welcome back to California, Pennsylvania, where we just ended the first quarter. California up on Lock Haven, 21 to zero, as we get ready to start this second quarter. And it's been a very busy time for the Vulcans offensively. Yeah, it's been an all Cal U to start here er, as we get ready to kick off the second quarter. Er, Cal U going right eight to left on your radio dials. So far, so good for the Vulcan offense. Let's see if they can keep this up in this first half. Brunson on the carry for the Vulcans, pushing ahead, not able to get the first down, Brunson but he gets very carrier. close. Yeah, we're gonna wait, wait the officials call. I think they're gonna measure it. That's very close. It's gonna be, looks That's like. For first down. Oh, they're gonna give it to they're him. They're gonna give Brunson the first down very close. I thought they were going to have to bring the chain crew out. Yeah, uh, uh, by the nose of the football on that one. Mm -hmm. Cal U taking over from their own 45-yard line. Mitchell under center now with a fresh set of downs ahead of him. Mitchell communicating to his team, trying to point out the Lock Haven defense. Handoff up the middle. He stopped in the backfield. And that is number four, Daryl Pollard, getting in the backfield for the Bald Eagles. Loss of one, second and 11. Let's look yeah. at this replay here. Yeah, broken in uh, running protection here for, for Cal U. And Brunson just couldn't get O anywhere after that. Vulcans awaiting the call now from their coach. Looks like Mitchell's going to set up here in the shotgun. Got a back to his left. Mitchell dropping back the pass. He's gonna roll to his right. He's gonna take it himself, can't find anybody, and is gonna just simply run out of bounds and get a few yards for the Vulcans. Yeah, a uh, good run. On the play. Uh, Noah Mitchell on this one. And as we take a look at the replay, a, a Lockhaven had good defensive coverage, but uh, Mitchell found on a lane, took it and run. And with it, getting, setting up a manageable third, third and four. Cal U pushing the Bald Eagle defense right now. Let's see if Lock Haven can contain them. And get and a quick signal from um, the, the coaches. They better hurry. Mitchell takes the snap. Quick pass, and he's down for the first down. That's Cam Tarrant completing the pass, and that is a California first down. Take a look at the replay here. Here, Peyton and Tarrant and had to go to a knee on this one. This was like a baseball throw oh, from Noah Mitchell. <laughs> oh, oh, right down the pike to him, um, but it was enough for or the first down on and got an extra yard out of it. So, oh, Cal U now in, in Lockheaven territory. 
Bald Eagles need to do something about this Vulcan offense. They have just been dominating so far, just marching up and down the field. And that's, that's Brunson finding a lane. He's got some green in front of him. And he's finally going to be brought down within the red zone of the Bald Eagles. Good run by Brunson on this one. Uh, and good blocking here as you look from on the replay. A found a lane, bounced to the outside, and started turning up field. Hold, hold, and then made the defenders miss here er, before he got stripped up inside the 17-yard line of Lockhaven. And I'm sure Cal U is not going to argue with that at all as they are, like I said, within the red zone of Lockhaven. Mitchell completing it to Jackson. Jackson up the sidelines. And are they going to give him the touchdown? Looks like say he was just short by about a, about a yard. Jackson will be stopped just short of that plane before he can break it. As we look at the fault. replay here. Here, Jackson catch and got behind the big boy up, hey, up front and started moving it. And but I, and now Cal U threatening once again from the one yard line. Let's see what kind of play they're gonna pull up here. Last time they just ran it in from the one. Let's see what Mitchell's thinking. Mitchell's gonna roll off to his right. He's gonna get a tackle and he just is gonna get in. They're gonna say, hey, he, hey, he got. Oh, they're gonna say he's short. Short, the ball came out, but he was down by contact. As you watch here, er, Noah bounced off a defender er, and then got wrapped up. Uh, but uh, it's, it's second, maybe second and goal from the one yard line. What a play by the Lock Haven defense to wrap up Mitchell's ankle and then just take him down like that. Mitchell's a very tall, tall guy so he, you know that you gotta you gotta aim low for him and you gotta be able to wrap him up that's the only way you're gonna be able to stop him yeah it looks like they're gonna go with that power eye formation now all for cal u and it's gonna be a run up the middle and that's gonna be kyle brunson on the vulcan touchdown brunson once again ends in into the end zone on, on as he, he found a lane and then just pushed his way into the end zone Own for six. That's the second time today we've called his name. As you look at the replay here, er, kept them feet moving and stretched out, out and got out the score. Er, it's 27 nothing, California. Lockhaven just under fire right now from this Vulcan offense. And as we're going to see, the point after attempt from Bitco, he's been perfect so far today. And he's going to keep that streak going. And he's going to make the point after when we come back. Vulcans are up 28 nothing. This is Vulcan Football on CUTV Sports 1 for the PSAC Network and WCAL 91.9 FM. Emotes say a lot, but they can't say it all. Think your guildmate is struggling? Try these dialogue options. beyond emotes. Check in with your guildmates at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium here in California, Pennsylvania. California is up on Lockhaven, 28 to zero after the break. Yeah, uh, let's go back here, look at the replay as Brunson and just hammers his way into through the end zone. As you can hear Blaze hammering away at the iron urn right now. He's gonna be hammering that thing 28 times as the score 28 to zero in favor of California. As we look our attention to the field, Lockhaven taking over. They cannot get anything on that run. Stopped in the backfield, trying to see who was on the carry. Looks like, looks like I... number 31 for the Vulcans. 
I mean the bald eagle, my apologies. Cool boy on the stop. That was uh, his cool boy. Play on the stop once again for for Cal U. Ooh, getting a nice, nice big loss there. Here it'll be second and fourteen now for the Bald Eagles. Persa in the shotgun. He's gonna give it to his back. The same one. And they keep going, and he's finally brought down. Well, again, the ball carrier. Corboy again on the stop. And Corboy once again on the stop for for Cal U. Third down. Vulcans forcing another third down for the Bald Eagles. Let's see what they do here. They're taking over their own 29 yard line, third and six. Parsa dropping back, and that pass is blocked away by the Vulcans. That's number 30 on the stop. That was Noah Dillo. We mentioned him earlier. He's been absolutely on fire on defense for California. Yeah, Chris Hicks, the intended target on that one, but it was double coverage, and that was a real tight window oh, that they were trying to throw into. That could Ooh, have good been, play by Cal U. That could have been very dangerous for the Bald Eagles. And they're going to have to, you know, just punt again. That's all what's been the story for Lock Haven this whole game. They're just punt, punt, punt. And no fair catch was called. He's still going. And he's still going. He's at the 20, the 10, the 5, California touchdown. That was Jamal Martin Jr. on the return. Let's take a look at the replay here, guys, as Martin finds a lane, gets a couple blockers, and takes it from 63 yards out for the score. Or as you can see here, or he's got a couple good blocks. It's an open lane, and then away he goes. We're up big here or in California. What a play by Jamal Martin Jr. Just rushing through that Lock Haven uh, defense and just easily able to put the score up for the Vulcans. They're going to go for the point after. Bitco. The kick is up. And it is good. California has a 35 to nothing lead over Lock Haven. You are watching Vulcan football on the PSAC network on 91.9 FM. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Adamson Stadium here in California, Pennsylvania. California is up on Lock Haven, 35 to nothing. And there we are on the punt return, the kick return for Lock Haven, ran back by number 20. And we're trying to get a name for that for you guys. Yeah, Rodriguez right there. Verga. There you go. Fans, it's time to announce our B graphics, man of the game. Congratulations. And let's look back at this replay here that on that punt return. That was on that on Jamal that touchdown Martin. was Jamal Martin Jr. You said it was a 63 yarder. And just what speed by the kid. Yeah. Persa giving it to his back. He's going to run it up the middle. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Going to be no gain or loss on the play. That's what it seems yeah. like. Once again, by a herd of, of Vulcan defenders. They've been, This is how it's been all afternoon from, from Cal U. Persa awaiting the call from the Lock Haven head coach. Uh, 8.35 left to go in this 
Second quarter, Vulcans dominating the Bald Eagles 35 to zero. Second and eight, Persa. Ball, fumble, recovered by the Vulcans, and he's going. That's what a recovery by California, and that's number seven, Mar Marvin Maddox. There is a flag on the on the play, however. This might be coming back. Well, we'll see. Yeah, that flag came in, in about middle of the play. As you look here on the replay, hey, there's the contact. Ball pops out. Oh, Cal U recovers. That's the second forced fumble that the Vulcans have recovered. We're waiting to see what's going on here. And we're awaiting the, the flag from the officials to see what that was all about before we can continue play here in sunny California. Making yeah. sure they get the call right here. While we have a moment, uh, let's take a look at the PSAC West standing. Things. And here we go. We got a the call. Looks like it's nope. The call looks like it's coming in now. What do we got? After the play was over, unnecessary roughness, personal foul, 51 on the defense. It's going to be a it's going to be a personal foul going against the Bald Eagles, and that's going to put California right at the doorstep. Yeah, and you can't have uh, any kind of mental mistakes like that, and that's going to hurt you every time. I am looking at the replay one more time on the at fumble recovery from from Cal U, who as now Cal U is and got the, got the Bald Eagles up again. It's the wall here inside uh, the 10 yard line. Vulcan's taking over at, at the Lock Haven eight yard line. Mitchell sends a receiver in motion. He's in the shotgun, dropping back the pass. Short pass to Brunson. And Brunson will pick up a few yards down at the five yard line. Second and goal for the Vulcans. Quick little old shuffle pass as you look at the, the replay here. Here, Mitchell old, was looking for somebody a little bit deeper, er, but shuffles it off to Brunson, and who takes it about three yards from the line of scrimmage. And it's now second and goal. Cal U threatening to score and add to their already humongous lead in this game. Mitchell under center making some calls out to his team, some adjustments. Going with that a strong eye formation. Mitchell takes the snap, drops back in the pocket. He's looking, he's feeling the pressure. He gets the ball away and he's gonna throw it out. And Intended target was Tayshawn Mack, a little over his head, and it's gonna be third and goal for the Vulcans. Yeah, Cal, you, you had nowhere to go on that one. Well, and Noah uh, just had to dump it off. Off was trying to scramble, but it uh, had a a swarm of bald eagle defenders on the play there. Bald eagles try to do everything they can to keep the Vulcans out of the end zone. We got a trip uh, trips right. Mitchell in the shotgun, looking to pass. He fires it away. Oh, and it is incomplete. incomplete. Off a of Daughtry's hand. And was the intended target for or Cal U. And this is going to be the first time we've seen the field goal unit come Fourth into the down. game that wasn't for or a PAT. And what a good job by Lockhaven to, to cover up those points. receivers and just to make Mitchell just throw it away and bring out that field goal team. Now we also got to pay attention here, or Peyton, because we do have a, a good little old breeze blowing and here at, up at Addison Stadium. It's going to be Anthony Bitko going for his first field goal attempt of the day. Kick is up. Kick is up. And it is through the uprights. Add three more to that score. It is 38 to 0 in favor of California. You are watching Vulcan Football on the PSAC Network and CU TV for 91.9 FM. We'll be back after these messages. The Cal U Vulcans are back on the gridiron this fall, and CUTV and WCAL give you the best seats in the house. September 2nd at Fairmont State. September 11th versus Lockhaven. September 18th versus Millersville. 
September 25th at Edinburgh. Homecoming, October 2nd versus Mercyhurst. October 9th at Gannon. October 16th versus Clarion. The Coal Bowl, October 23rd at IUP. October 30th versus Seton Hill. November 6th at Slippery Rock. November 13th at Bloomsburg or the PSAC title game. All games are live on CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM, WCAL. And welcome back. We have Lockhaven versus California at Adamson Stadium. Vulcans have a big lead over the Bald Eagles, 38-0. to zero. And it has just not been Lockhaven's day, don't you say? Yeah, uh, uh, they had a couple different attempts early on, but uh, it's been in all California. Uh, as we look at the replay, they they had they from earlier. There you've had all, all sorts of, of scores from California. You had a special team score. The offensives rushed it, it and thrown it in. And the only thing we haven't had is a defensive touchdown yet. And who's to say that might not come? There's already been two fumbles during this game. Lockhaven on the rush, and he's going to find a hole. He's going to take it to the outside, and he's finally brought down on the play, enough for a Lockhaven first down. That's number 31 on the carry for the Bald Eagles. They're still old the carry, on the carry on that one. Watch the replay here. Here he finds a couple open lanes, bounces to the outside before he's tripped up by a couple Vulcan defenders. And a name on that number is Dimir Still, number 31 for the Lock Haven Bald Eagles. And that's Still again. He's met abruptly in the backfield by the Vulcan defense. And that's Micah Tillman stopping him in the backfield. Yeah, uh, Tillman and coming downfield. We'll watch the replay here. here. As soon as they snapped the ball, Tillman was in the backfield. Someone missed the block. And it looks like we got a timeout on the field here. Timeout called. Didn't see. Called by the Vulcans, it looks like. As yeah, uh, number 54, four of California. Uh, a little shaken up. That's Corboy. That's Corboy. That's a big factor er, to the Cal U defense. Let's hope. And as he's going over to the bench to get checked out real quick. And let's hope that he gets back in this game. And another run for Still. Able to pick up a few yards on the play. Enough to put them back within the six. Not enough for a first down. Going to be third and five for the Bald Eagles. Yeah. Yeah, still Oles, Oles just keeps turning his legs and gets it, gets it moving. And he's been, and so far, the most efficient in back for or lock even this game. Persa going to be lined up in the shotgun. Passing, completed, and he is knocked down abruptly by Nazir Taylor. And he looks like he's shaken up on the play. That's number 88 making the catch, Alex Lance. Yeah, Lance went up for that ball, and, oh, and he paid for it. That's why a lot of these guys, you don't see them like making, making that at bit. Big jumping catch if they don't have to, because of plays like that. And as Taylor came in and, and just knocked him in the next week. While we get a moment here, Peyton, let's take a look at the PSAC East standings now. Now, lock even in there. Towards the top right now, or as it stands, and as after picking up a win, but we're gonna start seeing a lot of those guys move around on after this week. Another big matchup of watching, taking a look at it right now all is Mercyhurst hosting in Westchester or up 35-10 over there right now. Oh. And here we go, Lockhaven setting up the offense again. It's still on the carry, stiff arm by Still. He's still pushing away, and that's enough for the Lockhaven first down. What, what an effort by the Lockhaven running back, Dimir Still, to fight his way for that first down. Yeah, looking at the replay here, Still, oh, just keep, it's getting into that opening field. Oh, and running, 
playing hard into that Vulcan defense and some dragging them along, along with him. This might be the first opportunity Lockhaven has really had during this game to try to get something going. They're going to take over at the Vulcan 30-yard line. And that's still on the carry. He's brought down in the backfield. Looks like by number 41. I'm trying and to get Josh a name. Miller. And Matt Toby. The number 46 and 47 uh, of California. And it's going to be second and 14 for the Bald Eagles after that behind the line of scrimmage stop by the defense. Yeah, good play. Hey, by the defense on that one to wrap up, up stills. And Persa lining up in the shotgun. And he's going to hand it off to the running back. That's number 26. And that's going to be a decently sized chunk of a run by number 26, Dante Graham of the Bald Eagles. It's going to be enough Taylor for a Lockhaven first down, and that's going to get them within striking distance, knocking on the doorstep of Cal U for the first time this game. Yeah, Graham, that's the first time we've called his name in a while. Oh, it's been all stills this uh, so far in this second quarter as, as Cal U's have seemed to have an answer for a couple of these backs. That's Graham again on the carry. Flag down on the play. Graham Graham brought down within the five yard line. And we gotta see what this flag is about. This may be coming back. Yeah, I think we gotta hold, hold just by the judging of the location of, of the flag being thrown. Referees are gonna quickly talk this over to see what, make sure they're all on the same page. And we're gonna get the call here shortly. Holding offense. And look at that, you were right. Holding call going against the Bald Eagles. Back them up 10 yards, and now they're out of they're out of the red zone. They're out of that striking distance, and that's gonna hurt, that's gonna hurt the Bald Eagles a little bit. Yeah, it was, well, they had good field position. They still do, but they're gonna have to work a little harder for that touchdown now. Graham getting the call yet again up the middle, being able to pick up about four yards on the play. Graham, the ball carrier, brought down at about the Vulcan 16-yard line, second and goal. Boykos and Brown on the stop. And Boykos and Brown on the e Cal U defenders in on the tackle. From the 16. Three minutes left to go here in this first half. Cal U up on Lockhaven, 38 to zero. Bald Eagles trying to get up on the scoreboard and seeing if they can get something going. Graham getting the call again. He's brought down at the line of scrimmage the by the Vulcans. And Cal U is not having any of that. Yeah, Toby, he, the linebacker, Aaron Maddox also oh, in there. Here as well as, as Brown. And this is going to be a big third down here or for Lockhaven. This might be the biggest third down Lockhaven's had this whole game. See if they can get something going here. Maybe get a little bit closer at the very least. Persa lined up in the shotgun. He scans the field and he completes the pass to his receiver as he's pushed out of bounds. Completed to number one. That's Justin White on the reception. Knocked out of bounds by Miller. He was knocked out of bounds by Miller for the Vulcans. Yeah, Miller or he's been all over the place. So it looks like they're going to bring in the field goal unit here for Lockhaven and for their first attempt at a score or all afternoon. Lockhaven's got to get up on that scoreboard somehow, regardless if it's a touchdown or a field goal, anything. They need something. And that's number 86 or 46. 46, it's number has. Number 46. And the kick is blocked by the Vulcans. Yeah. And they they can't even get the field goal on the board. No, yeah, no good for the Bald Eagles. Score remains 38 to zero as we're gonna send it to break for the. Now, uh, take a look here. Let's take here, a look at this replay, replay before we send it to break. As the Vulcan and 
just swarmed in, and they've been all over the is bald eagle offense the entire day. A big play a there by, by the defenders of Cal U. Is they're getting ready to take over from first and ten. First and ten for the Vulcans. Big defensive stop just now, blocking that field goal. And let's see if Noah Mitchell and his Vulcans can get up the field. Mitchell in the shotgun passes. Caught. Looks like that's I mean, number 13. Number 13 I mean, with the reception. In on, a, on Mac. That's Tayshawn Mack on the reception. Caught, and it's going to be enough to move the sticks for the Vulcans yet again. And here's where that two minute offense comes in now. Oh, for Cal U. You notice how he got out of bounds to stop that clock. This is what Cal U is going to have to do if they want to get a touchdown by the end of this half. Going to have to keep just going out of bounds and seeing what they can do. Mitchell in the shotgun, another passing play. Steps up in the pocket. He rolls to his right, looks downfield, and he's just going to throw it out of bounds real quick. Yeah, he had no. Mitchell had nobody to throw to. Ooh, so it ju who just threw it out of bounds. Wants to sit a face for now. Rather throw it out of bounds and to throw it to a lock haven defender or even chance it. Vulcans will take over second and 10 now from their own 25 yard line. Mitchell dropping back the pass, throwing it and it's caught by zero, that's Cam Terrett, and that's enough again to move the chains for the Vulcans. Tarrant, one of Noah Mitchell's big receivers there. There's now they're gonna get into the hurry up. Mitchell in the shotgun yet again. He's gonna survey the field. He's feeling the pressure, and he's just gonna throw it away before he takes the sack. They're not going to call all intentional grounding on this one and because there was a receiver in the area. It was running back number 14. Going out of field was a backward mm. pass. Out of bounds. Ball will be played for and out of bounds. Going on a snap. And it looked like that ball went backwards, went out of bounds, and that will back California up just a little bit. They'll take over at their own 33-yard line for second and long. Mitchell trying to make up that target. Quick, quick little pass. And he'll head out of bounds. That'll be either Eric McCann and the third. third will be bring up a third down and about all six. That was Eric McCann, the second on the reception for the Vulcans, just getting out of bounds and stopping that clock. Correction, it'll be third and three on that uh, play. And I guess McCann got more, more yardage than I thought. Mitchell again in that in that shotgun formation. California's on a little bit of a roll right now. Quick pass to Terrett. He's gonna catch it, he's gonna get the first down. And that's what's important right now for the Vulcans. The clock is running. We're going to see a hurry-up offense. Uh, uh, college football until the ball's placed. It's going to be the clock stopped for a brief moment. Mitchell deep in the pocket, surveying the field. He's going to throw it. Caught! Touchdown, Vulcans! That's once again. And it's Jackson with the catch from about oh, 49 yards out. What a play by Jaquay Jackson. What a reception and what a touchdown for California. Take a look at the replay here. Here, Noah had all sorts of pressure during that. And once again, he finds Jaquay Jackson and down the field. Old and right there er, makes the one-handed catch for or, or the score. What a play by the Vulcans, and this offense has been absolutely unstoppable. And Bitco will go for the extra point. Kick is up, and it goes right through the uprights for the extra point. 
your score, 45 to nothing in favor of the Vulcans. When we come back, we have 40, about a minute left to go from the Vulcan Football Network, PSAC Network, and WCAL 91.9 FM. The Cal U Vulcans are back on the gridiron this fall, and CUTV and WCAL give you the best seats in the house. September 2nd at Fairmont State. September 11th versus Lock Haven. September 18th versus Millersville. September 25th at Edinburgh. Homecoming, October 2nd versus Mercyhurst. October 9th at Gannon. October 16th versus Clarion. The Coal Bowl, October 23rd at IUP. October 30th versus Seton Hill. November 6th at Slippery Rock. November 13th at Bloomsburg or the PSAC title game. All games are live on CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM, WCAL. And welcome back to Adamson Stadium in California, Pennsylvania. The Vulcans are up 45 to nothing over the Bald Eagles in what has been an absolute offensive powerhouse for California. Yeah, it's been in all Cal U so far as we look at the replay here. Here with Jackson making the catch and into the end zone for or the score. Or is we got about all 50 seconds left to play here or in regulation or in the first half, I should say. Bald Eagles taking over on their own 26 yard line, first and 10. And that play is snuffed out by the Vulcan defense. And I believe that was that was still on the carry for the Bald Eagles. Yeah, Gerald Brown on, on the Cal U defender in there first. No gain on the play. Second Stopped down. him right there at the line of scrimmage. And that clock is running. About 30 seconds left to play in this half. Yeah, it's curious to see what Lockhaven's going to do here. Or they're going to get the ball to start or the second half, but they're going to have to figure something out. And still gets the carry, goes up the middle, met very abruptly by the California line. And looks like that is going to be the last play of the half. Your score, California 45, Lock Haven 0, as we send it to halftime. You're watching Vulcan Football on the PSAC Network and 91.9 FM WCAL. We'll be back after these messages. Hey Johnny, why do you look so sad? Well, no, I'm not sure how my friends and family back in Gibbon Glade, Pennsylvania can keep track of all our CUTV programming when they can't watch. Well, Johnny, they could subscribe to our new CUTV and Friends podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Hey, thanks, Noel! If you are looking for a Christian club that features Bible study and spiritual nourishment, then come find your family with New Life Cal U. Swing by Oasis every Tuesday at 7 p.m. in Italy 321 to explore faith through Bible study, games, and fellowship. Or stop by Converge on Thursdays at 7 p.m. in the Natali Rotunda to make friends and enjoy life through casual hangouts. Everyone is welcome. Connect with New Life Cal U at www.newlifecalu.com backslash connect. Looking for something to do? Then don't miss the 2021 Health Fair. This year, the Health Fair will be on Wednesday, October 6th in the Convocation Center Arena from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. There will be free STD testing, a blood drive, prizes, free health screens, flu and COVID vaccines, giveaways, and much, much more. Don't miss the excitement. Be at the Convocation Center on October 6th for the 2021 Health Fair. The Cal U Cupboard connects students to information, services, and resources both on and off campus while providing free items such as food, school supplies, personal hygiene items, and more to our students. Visit our two locations at the Vulcan Village Clubhouse and Itali Student Center, or for a contactless option, visit bit.ly.com backslash 
Calu Cover to request food or give donations. For important Calu information, community resources, and our how-to series, follow at Calu Cover on Instagram and the campus-wide announcements. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Our children and families want us to be healthy. That's why I and lots of other grown-ups got the COVID-19 vaccine so we can stay healthy and get back to the moments we miss, like seeing our friends and family. Here you go, Daddy, for a healthy checkup, a sticker. Oh, thanks, son. <laughs> With free COVID-19 vaccines, sunnier days are ahead. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org. Vulcan Volleyball is back and you can catch all the action with CU TV and the PSAC Network. After a year away from the court, the Vulcans are set to try and get back to the top of the PSAC. A full slate of action versus such PSAC opponents, Gannon, Mercyhurst, Edinburgh, Clarion, Seton Hill, Slippery Rock, IUP and Pitt Johnstown. Every home game will be live on CU TV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Inside the PSAC. I'm your host, Gary Smith. Week one is in the books, and we are looking forward to an exciting week two of interdivisional play. But first, let's take a look back and put a ribbon on all the scores from week one in the PSAC. And week one was filled with matchups that were non-conference matchups left and right, so a lot of scoreboards to go through. And as we see here, Caillou goes on the road at Fairmont, wins 23-14. We'll go down the columns here on the scoreboard. Slippery Rock slips by Wayne State, 24-21. Edinburgh was supposed to travel to Grand Valley State. That game was canceled and will not be made up. So Edinburgh will be playing a an eleven or excuse me a ten game season rather than an eleven game season. American International taking a long trip to Millersville and gets the win, fourteen to nine over the Marauders. Wheeling not so lucky on the road. They go to Seton Hill in Greensburg, PA, and lose by two. Seton Hill gets the win, sixteen to fourteen. Gannon traveling to Northwood, Michigan. Gets the win in overtime, 28-21. to 21. So a happy bunch of Knights making the trip back to Erie, PA. Last column now. The pace setters going to East Stroudsburg, and East Stroudsburg gets the win, 35-14. Game of the week, probably right here. Shepard and Ohio Dominican. Shepard traveling to Columbus, Ohio, and gets the win, 35-30. to 30. And then Bentley holding home serve against the Westchester Rams, 41-17. to Now moving on to the remaining games in Week 1. Quitstown winning 19 to nothing over Assumption. And then Shippensburg holding serve at home once again for the PSAC, winning 25-17 over West Virginia State. Stonehill beating the road squad, Bloomsburg Huskies, 35-13. Lake Erie on the road getting a road upset win at Clarion, 31-26. Mercyhurst and Alderson brought us in a low-scoring affair, but the Lakers beat the Battlers 18-3. And then Lockhaven shutting out Lincoln on the road 20 to nothing in Lockhaven's first road shutout victory since the early 80s. And now let's look at the all-too-early standings after one week. So really nothing on this scoreboard will have any impact later in the season on the playoffs, but it is good to see how everything shook out divisionally after week one. You see in the PSAC West, Cal, U, Gannon, Mercyhurst, Seton Hill, and Slippery Rock, all 1-0. Edinburgh with that cancellation remains 0-0. IEP was not scheduled to play week one. They will have a 10-game schedule this year. They were 0-0. And then Clarion, the lone team in the PSAC West to take a loss. Now slipping over to the PSAC East, you see East Stroudsburg, Kutztown, Lockhaven, Shepherd, and Shippensburg, all with the W's, and then Bloomsburg, Millersville, and Westchester going 0-1. But a lot of those numbers, of course, will change as we move into Week 2. And this week is an interdivisional uh, play week with the PSAC. All these games will be hosted by PSAC West teams, so there's going to be a lot of traffic going east to west along the route. So uh, if you see a PSAC sticker on a car, wave and know that they're going to see some good football this weekend. Lockhaven and Cal U, uh, first time since 2015 these two teams have played. Old 
PSAC West Rivals before the expansion and reconfiguration of the PSAC. That game will be at 1 p.m. Westchester traveling to Mercyhurst. That game will be at 12 noon. Shepherd Rams going to Erie to face the Gannon Golden Knights. That game will also kick off at noon. And then another old school PSAC West matchup uh, before the expansion and reconfiguration. Shippensburg traveling to Edinburgh. That game will be at noon. Millersville traveling to Clarion at 1 p.m. Kutztown going to IUP, and that could be the game of the week right there. That game is slated to kick off at 2 p.m. Bloomsburg going to Seton Hill. That's a 6 p.m. night game. And then another night game, East Stroudsburg going out to Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania to take on the Slippery Rock Rocks. So that's the schedule for the week. And if you want to make sure to keep track of everything in the PSAC, go to the source, PSACsports.org, for all the schedule, standing stats, and more, because that is the home office, and they will have all the pertinent information. Uh, as for us at CUTV and at Cal U, before we go to CUTV, if you're interested in Cal U stuff, go to calvalkins.com. Also follow them at Twitter at calvalkins, Instagram at calvalkins. Matt Kiefer, Trey Staunch, and their staff working long, long hours to provide uh, Vulcan Nation with all the stats, stories, and more that fans can expect because this is the fall season and there is a lot going on. So those guys are doing a tremendous amount of work on very little sleep. And as for us here at CUTV, we have a full slate of action going on in the next week or so, starting next week, or well, after this week's Lock Haven game. Uh, next week, high school football game of the week, Elizabeth Ford at Brownsville. And then Vulcan football versus Millersville on the 18th. That's at 1 p.m. Then women's soccer versus Gannon, September 22nd at 6 p.m. And then Friday, Vulcan volleyball versus Clarion, the first chance we have a chance at CUTV to see Coach Peter Letourneau's uh, squad in 2021. They will be at home on the 24th at 6 p.m. And then Vulcan football at Edinburgh on the 25th. That's at 12 noon. And there's also a volleyball contest on that day, but the graphic ran out of space. So uh, to follow us and see what we do live, go to our YouTube page at CUTV Sports 1. That's where we'll see coverage of all of our live games as well as all of our studio shoots will be archived, highlights, and more. And don't forget our friends that we also provide content for at the PSAC Network. All of our games will be live there as well. Uh, you can download their app on uh, your smart TV, Roku, or also there's a handy little app on your phone. So you can keep up with everything in the PSAC uh, in the fall sports and every school, including your, your friends here at CUTV uh, on the PSAC Network. Um, and that's it for week two of Inside the PSAC. We'll see you next time. I'm your host, Gary Smith. As a family back in Gibbon Blade, Pennsylvania, can keep track of all our CUTV programming when they can't watch. Well, Johnny, they could subscribe to our new CUTV and Friends podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Hey, thanks, Noel. If you are looking for a Christian club that features Bible study and spiritual nourishment, then come find your family with New Life Cal U. Swing by Oasis every Tuesday at 7 p.m. in Italy 321 to explore faith through Bible study, games, and fellowship. Or stop by Converge on Thursdays at 7 p.m. in the Natali Rotunda to make friends and enjoy life through casual hangouts. Everyone is welcome. Connect with New Life Cal U at... Looking for something to do? Then don't miss the 2021 Health Fair. This year, the Health Fair will be on Wednesday, October 6th in the Convocation Center Arena from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. There will be free STD testing, a blood drive, prizes, free health screens, flu and COVID vaccines, giveaways, and much, much more. Don't miss the excitement. Be at the Convocation Center on October 6th for the 2021 Health Fair. The Cal U Cupboard connects students to information, services, and resources both on and off campus while providing free items such as food, school supplies, personal hygiene items, and more to our students. Visit our two locations at the Vulcan Village Clubhouse and Itali Student Center, or for a contactless option, visit bit.ly.com backslash Cal U Cupboard to request food or give donations. For important Cal U information, community resources, and our how-to series, 
follow at CalUCovert on Instagram and the campus-wide announcements. Okay, Daddy, Dr. Elmo says you're healthy. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Our children and families want us to be healthy. That's why I and lots of other grown-ups got the COVID-19 vaccine, so we can stay healthy and get back to the moments we miss, like seeing our friends and family. There you go, Daddy, for a healthy checkup. Vulcan Volleyball is back, and you can catch all the action with CUTV and the PSAC Network. After a year away from the court, the Vulcans are set to try and get back to the top of the PSAC. A full slate of action versus such PSAC opponents, Gannon, Mercyhurst, Edinburgh, Clarion, Seton Hill, Slippery Rock, IUP, and Pitt Johnstown. Every home game will be live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Net. September 2nd at Fairmont State. September 11th versus Lock Haven. October 9th at Gannon. October 16th versus Clarion. The Coal Bowl, October 23rd at IUP. October 30th versus Seton Hill. November 6th at Slippery Rock. November 13th at Bloomsburg or the PSAC title game. All games are live on CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9. Vulcan Volleyball is back, and you can catch all the action with CUTV and the PSAC Network. After a year away from the court, the Vulcans are set to try and get back to the top of the PSAC. A full slate of action versus such PSAC opponents, Gannon, Mercyhurst, Edinburgh, Clarion, Seton Hill, Slippery Rock, IUP, and Pitt Johnstown. Every home game will be live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. Looking for something to do? Then don't miss the 2021 Health Fair. This year, the Health Fair will be on Wednesday, October 6th in the Convocation Center Arena from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. There will be free STD testing, a blood drive, prizes, free health screens, flu and COVID vaccines, giveaways, and much, much more. Don't miss the excitement. Be at the Convocation Center on October 6th for the 2021 Health Fair. If you are looking for a Christian club that features Bible study and spiritual nourishment, then come find your family with New Life Cal U. Swing by Oasis every Tuesday at 7 p.m. in Italy 321 to explore faith through Bible study, games, and fellowship. Or stop by Converge on Thursdays at 7 p.m. in the Natali Rotunda to make friends and enjoy life through casual hangouts. Everyone is welcome. Connect with New Life Cal U at www.newlifecalu.com backslash connect. The Cal U Cupboard connects students to information, services, and resources both on and off campus while providing free items such as food, school supplies, personal hygiene items, and more to our students. Visit our two locations at the Vulcan Village Clubhouse and Itali Student Center, or for a contactless option, visit bit.ly.com backslash CalUCubbert to request food or give donations. For important CalU information, community resources, and our how-to series, follow at CalUCubbert on Instagram and the campus-wide announcements. Welcome back, everyone, to Edmonton Stadium as we get it ready for the, the second half of Vulcan football. We're going to take a look back here at the replay of the, the first half as we look at the first touchdown of the game for Kyle Yu, who as they converted on a, a fumble here, here that Kyle Yu got uh, 
uh, deep inside of Lock Haven territory area that set up the one yard or the two yard touchdown run, run from Kyle Brunson and shortly after that as we're looking at the replay on the Brunson run here there is he powers his way through into the end zone on get of Cal U a seven nothing lead shortly after that at Noah Mitchell drop back and hit Jacor boy Jackson and in stride he does he turn on the Astroburners there er, er, for a 69 yeah. Eric McCann and of Cal U who took the ball 14 yards into the touchdown on made it 21 to nothing us for or the score puts Cal U up up 28 to nothing and then once again and Jamal All Martin making it happen on special teams this time and as he took it to the house 62 yards as he got some um, open field and some good blockers and then and that made it 35 nothing and that Cal U comes in in here they're looking for or another big one as the ball comes loose on the contact from um, Graham um, drops the ball Cal U picks it up up and gets it deep inside of Bald Eagle territory. However, or Cal U whose drive would stop all oh, only come up with a field goal. Then they would come back later on and with another Earth her long pass to who, who else but Jacoy Jackson. And as he took it 47 yards in for the score to make it 45 to nothing. It's been a very offensive half for the Vulcans. Let's see if they can continue this very big offensive push here in this second half of the game. Yeah, it was a definitely all Cal U. Ooh, Lockhaven will start or this half with the ball all oh, again. Oh, let's see if they can make something happen. And as we have both teams on the field now, just warming up right now just to see, get everyone's legs uh, loose and just to see no, there are no injuries. Don't want to see that. It's never a good thing yeah, to see. Here, take a look at some of the stat. That's from the first half. Uh, Cal U with, with 17 first downs. Lockhaven with six. Cal U, U on 17 rushing attempts for 78 yards. Er, pa passing yardage. They've got uh, uh, six, they're six yards shy of 300 at 294. Jeez. Or, or as well. Oh. Well, Cal U is four of six and third down conversion and and not all. Oh, here's the other cool stat uh, uh, is Jacoy Jackson, seven receptions, 213 yards for two touchdowns, longest being that 69 yard, yard gallop to the end zone back in the first quarter for a play. Noah Mitchell, all 16 of 21, and has been sacked one time. So his offensive line has protected him so far or today. Hey, so we'll keep an eye on that at offensive line and as we get ready to kick it off here in the second half. Everything has been just working so perfectly for the Vulcans on offense. So we won't get to see them on offense right now. We'll get to see the defensive side. But let's see if anything changed for the Lock Haven offense. As this third quarter is underway here in Adamson Stadium. Yeah, that was a deep kick there for Cal U. Ooh, and I think Lockhaven should have just left that one bounce once oh, they brought it, Darryl took Pollard. it from the one yard line. As Pollard or was the a returner on that one, knocked out of bounds. It looks like it's going to be at the a Lockhaven and, and 15. 15 yard line. Let's look at a little bit of quarterback comparison. Ethan Persa on eight attempts, he's four for eight, about 50%. And Noah Mitchell, he's 16 for 21. Obviously, we see who's been passing a bit more. But Persa hands the ball to Still, and Still will pick up a few yards on the play. Not, an, not enough for the first down, but it is a decent chunk of yards to start this third quarter off. Yeah, good run by Still. Still has been one of the better backs here. Here, if you're looking at the stat line, hey, not nine attempts for 25 or for 55 yards, or it's lost on 12. Oh, his longest run was a 23-yard gain so far today. Hey, versus Kyle Brunson, 11 yards on 50. Or 11 attempts on 56 care or 56 yards and still brought down in the backfield by the Vulcans looks like Garrett that's 
core boy. He's back in the game. We saw him exit the game with a little bit of a lip, but now he's back well rested after halftime and he's making plays. Yeah, big play hey, by Cora boy hey, on that stop there. And that'll back, that'll back the Bald Eagles up a few. It'll be about third and four for Lockhaven. Let's see what is up the sleeves of Lockhaven. Purse is gonna be in the shotgun. We got a receiver in motion. Roll to his right. And that pass is incomplete. It is knocked away by Jamal Martin Jr. What a play by him, yeah, forcing that fourth down. Almost intercepted as we take a look here at the replay. A, 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 as Persa uh, rolls out to his right, a, and Jamal Martin Jr. jumping the route, nearly intercepting it and taking it, it out of bounds, but good enough uh, good attempt there as he knocked it that pass away to bring up fourth down. I tell you what, I looked at it. I really thought he was I really thought he was diving to intercept it, but at least he knocked it out of bounds and forces this punt for Lockhaven. The ball is up. Fair catch by Martin Jr. and the Vulcans take over at around midfield, first and ten. Yeah. Uh, that was a good uh, defensive series there from California. Uh, Lockhaven still struggling to find any kind of offense here to start the game. We saw earlier in the first half they had a chance to do a field goal, but they just they couldn't get it. They Vulcans ended up blocking that, it's and been, they just have not had the luck today. It has been all Cal U today a, on all sides of the ball as we get for, ready for the first offensive series. Down the field, and it's almost picked off by a Lock Haven player, and that was number three with that breakup. I'm trying to get a number for you. That is Kahari Whitefield with that defensive stop for the Bald Eagles. It's going to be second and ten from the Vulcans' 45-yard line. Yeah, Mitchell's lucky that pass just fell in incomplete. M Mitchell lining up in the shotgun now. Takes it. He's going to give it to his running back, and he's going to take it to the first down and a little bit more. That's Brunson once again, and, and that big power runner going downfield, found on some open lanes, and got uh, Cal U deep into who Lockhaven territory just inside the 40 yard line now. Cal U will have a fresh set of sticks now. As I've said multiple times, they have been doing very good on offense. As stated, multiple first downs lead to multiple touchdowns. And that's Brunson up the middle. And he meets that defender and lays him out. Brunson just stopping at nothing. Yeah, let's take a look at the replay here, here Peyton. Brunson once again and finding a way a to do it, get it in some open field. Finds a lane and start, starts to bounce to the near side. Aid, aid well, makes some contact with the defender. Er, er, shoves him off. Gets and another yard. Er, and it's going to be first and 10 for Cal U. Now oh, deep well inside. Aid, the Bald Eagle territory. Lock, and Cal U will take over at the Lock Haven. Looks like the 27 yard line. Mitchell awaiting a call from the sidelines. Looks like he's got it now. Everyone lining up, waiting for the call. Mitchell in the shotgun, he's gonna roll to his right. He's looking, caught! And he's brought down to the ground by, looks like number 20 of the Lock Haven Bald Eagles. That's Amir Edwards slamming Jaquay Jackson to the ground. That was uh, Jamie Rodriguez, is Vega. Uh, on the stop there, or as you look, look, look Vega uh, uh, doing a WWE he, uh, impression and with the suplex there. Yeah, he <laughs> no mercy between these two teams. Mitchell second down now for the Vulcans. He's going to drop back, pass it, feeling a little bit of pressure. He's going to float it, and it's going to be just over the head of Jackson. It's going to bring up a third down and four. Yeah, th 
And even though it's third and four, or count, you still have a ma can manage this series right here. Here, the worst they can come away from this drive is with a field goal. Yes, we all know Anthony Bitco has been just a machine today. Every point after, he's gotten every field goal. Well, he's only gotten one field goal today, but he made that. That's what's important. 100% completion rate for Bitco. As we wait for the play to start, Mitchell making sure his offense is set. He's going to drop back in the pocket, feeling a bit of pressure. He's going to float it out to Brunson, and he is brought down by Austin Barber of the Bald Eagles. Not before he picks up the Vulcan first down. And that's how it's been for Cal U. It's been them short or dump, ump and goes. And Cal U looks like they're going to take over at the Vault Lock Haven 18 yard line. First and 10. They just keep slowly and slowly pushing. It's going to be first and 10 from the 13. 13 yard line. My apologies. I can't read. He's going for the end zone, and he's tripped up. He cannot get it. Pass intended for Terrence. On the coverage there was Vega. Second down. Tarrant once again looking, popped up, was looking for a call, but the referee said no. Who on that one? Ten forty-five left to go in this third quarter. Vulcans up by a landslide, forty-five to nothing, and looking to keep extending that lead. Mitchell handing it off to his back, Brunson. Brunson's going to be. Looks like he stopped at the line of scrimmage. Might have gained a few yards on the play. Yeah, it looks like he got about oh, three or four on that one. Brunson, the ball and they're going to give him forward progress as. As and Scott on the stop. As Johnson and Scott, the defenders from Lockhaven on the the, the play. Hey, but that's the problem now with having with Brunson seven. as your running back is he's a big guy and he's hard to stop. That's one thing with Brunson. He's gonna keep his legs moving until you forcefully take him down. He's not stopping until he hears that whistle. Mitchell back in the pocket on third down. He's gonna escape the pressure, take it himself. And he's just going to roll out of bounds, and good move by him. And it looks like he's going to pick up the first down and put, and put his Vulcans well inside That's good for Vulcan. the, first down. the first and goal now first um, the three. from the three. California banging at the door of Lockhaven yet again, as we've seen all game today. Mitchell able to set his team in extremely good field position. He's got that heavy eye formation. Uh, stoppage on the play. Timeout. Now, first of the half. Timeout called by the Vulcans, and that is their first of the half. It's now time for the Dairy Queen ice uh, so cream screen. We take a timeout here, folks. We're going to take a look now at the PSAC. He's scheduled oh, once again in for this week. Uh, as I said earlier, we were keeping an eye on on a couple different games. The one that still has my my uh, my attention is going to be that IUP Kutztown game because that has a big playoff implication, and you're starting off already with with that big of a, a rival in the uh, PSAC. And I know it's cross division play right now, so. Oh, waiting to see if we have a update on that one yet. That game kicked off at 2 o'clock. As well, oh, some other games around. Shippensburg at Edinburgh. Mercy is playing host to Westchester. Shepherd at Gannon. And Millersville at Clarion. And Bloomsburg over at Seton Hill. And East Stroudsburg at Slippery Rock. Those all sound like very good games, very watchable games. Well, we got a game on our hands right here in California as the Vulcans looking to score, threatening to score. Mitchell gives the ball to his running back. That's Brunson. There is a flag on the play. Brunson the ball carrier. There is a flag on the play. Unsure if he broke the plane. I see there are flags on the play. Well, it looks like the ball might have came out and they're saying, and Lock even saying that they got it. So we'll find out what's going on Eagle here. Formation. Offense, five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. It's going to be an 
illegal formation call going against the Vulcans. It's going to yeah. back him up five yards. Yeah, can't make that, that kind of mistake. You're right there Aaron, knocking on the door, or you got well, at the, th the two yard line, and now you got backed up to the eight. Let's see what happens. Let's see if the Vulcans can bounce back on this minor setback that they have. They're going to be set at the eight yard line, first and goal. So at least they have that going for them. If they don't get it on this one, Mitchell under center in a hurry up offense, rolls to his right, completed pass, touchdown, Vulcans. That's gonna be the LH product, uh, the local boy, Ian Edenfield, old at the tight end spot. But for the scores, you take a look here at the replay, hey, that quick hurry up offense, and Mitchell oh, with the snap, uh, rolls to ooh, the near side here. Here, finds Edenfield old wide open and for the score. Oh. The to the extra point. What, what a play by the Vulcans with the fake handoff to Brunson rolling to his right and then he's easily able to find Edenfield and he gets in there for the Vulcan score. And Bitco looking to extend this lead even more. Kick is, Kick up. is up and it is good. The California Vulcans are up on the Lock Haven Bald Eagles, 52 to zero. And we will be back after these messages. You are watching Vulcan football on the PSAC Network, 91.9 FM. The Cal U Vulcans are back on the gridiron this fall and CUTV and WCAL give you the best seats in the house. September 2nd at Fairmont State. September 11th versus Lock Haven. September 18th versus Millersville. September 25th at Edinburgh. Homecoming, October 2nd versus Mercyhurst. October 9th at Gannon. October 16th versus Clarion. The Coal Bowl, October 23rd at IUP. October 30th versus Seton Hill. November 6th at Slippery Rock. November 13th at Bloomsburg or the PSAC title game. All games are live on CUTV Sports One, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM, WCAL. And welcome back to California, Pennsylvania, where the kickoff is up and away after the Vulcans put it into the touchdown 52 to zero. That is the score here in Adamson Stadium. Yeah, take a look at the replay here, here or once again, as Cal went into the hurry up of Upset, quick snap up as Mitchell rolls out near side and finds Ian Edenfield old for the score or to put a Cal U up, up big as you can hear him hammering away a, at the girder. Er. And Lock Haven taking over at their own 27 yard line. First and 10, Persa in the shotgun. He's going to give it to. Oh, thought he's going to give it to Still. He's actually going to pass it to a wide, his wide receiver, and that's Alex Lance making the catch. Yep. We actually saw Lance go down earlier in this game. It's glad to see that he is back into this game for the Bald Eagles. Yeah, uh, you don't like seeing a player go down on during the game at any point in time. Absolutely game, but, not. Uh, uh, good to see him back into the game now for or, or uh, Lockhaven now. And it's going to be about second and two now for the Bald Eagles. Handoff to his back, still up the middle. He's going to be and close to that marker. Steal the ball carrier. That is going to be enough for a Lockhaven first down. Yeah, something we haven't said much of today. A Lockhaven and only. Being held up old prior to this, so about all six first downs in the entire game. That's the thing, this Lock Haven offense has been stopped by the Vulcan defense. Just as their offense has been explosive, none of this would have happened without the execution of this California defense. They have just stuffed Lock Haven at every angle, have an answer for everything and Lockhaven can't get anything done. As, for example, still with the ball, he's brought down in the backfield by the Vulcan defenders. Loss of a yard, second and 11. And you know, as I was saying, just those Vulcan defense has just been on point and good on him. 
Yeah, yeah looking that. at the replay here. No, oh, Sova uh, coming in once again and making the stop up for, for Cal U oh, and dropping them for a loss. Here we go. Persa in the I formation. Hand off to the back still, and he's brought down in the backfield by the Vulcans, and looks like that's number 55 on the stop. It's Brown. Gerald Brown once again. And just this California defense has been eating up the Lock Haven offense. Yeah, this is taking a look at the replay here. Here you see how old Cal U swarming to the football once again and, and just blowing up. Up that backfield old of Lockhaven. And it's gonna be third and 15 for the Bald Eagles. Persa in the shotgun, dropping back, feeling pressure, escapes the pocket, rolls to his right, and the catch is, the catch is made, it, the catch is made for the Lockhaven. First down, what a catch yeah, by the Bald the Eagles. Or you, Cal, you thought they were going to get it person in the backfield, First but he down, rolls Lockhaven out and finds 48. a guy eye on the far side and brings it in, in for the first down. On well, now they're at midfield. Lockhaven marching up the field now. Let's see if they can build off of that momentum of the great catch. Still gets the ball, and he's brought down in the backfield by California and that's Kevon number Mormon. five. Kevon on Mormon and once again and making himself known as he gets that big loss for or the, the Vulcans. Second down and it's gonna back him up to their own 45 yard line. Looks like it'll be second and 13 for the Bald Eagles. Both teams making substitutions as we wait for the ball to be snapped. Cal U coming out, 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 looks like in that dime formation. Persa in the shotgun, throwing it to a receiver and he's caught it. And that's number 10 with the catch, Chase Holmes, Holmes making the catch for the Bald Eagles. Mormon in and Toby, the defenders there for Cal U as you look at the replay here. Here, Persa, uh, just a little old drop and catch. And you know, that that's what the, this Bald Eagle offense needs right now, just the short offensive plays that can just get the ball down the field and just try to get something on the scoreboard. And they're they're ba just barely in California territory on the Vulcan 49-yard line. Persa rolls to his right, feeling pressure. Floats it downfield and it goes out of bounds. There is a flag on the play. I think we're gonna get this one's gonna be coming back for a hold, hold because it looks like what the lineman, one of the linemen for uh, Lockhaven had a hold of the Cali Hugh sweater. That is definitely a no go. You cannot be doing that. Let's see what this call is from the officials. Still waiting for a call. Holding. And there it is. The holding call going against the Bald Eagles, just like you said, Johnny. And that's against number 55 the, of Lockhaven. Definitely cannot, cannot hold a player. You know, you're trying to make a block, but you got to be more disciplined. You can't, you can't reach your arm over that shoulder pad. You can't be grabbing the jersey. You got to keep your hands tucked and just block. Actually, correction, it's number 75. It's left guard, Anthony Barber. There was the, the call for, uh, for or the foul. Bald Eagles, third down. Persa floating it downfield, and it's just out of reach for Jennifer McBride. the... Receiver that intended target was Kyir McBride, overthrown on that play. Yeah, uh, going back, uh, if you look, look, Persa uh, had all sorts of pressure coming in and, and got uh, hit as he threw. Oh, so you got to wonder if he was hurrying that, that throw up who just a little bit. And that's another tip of the cap to the California defense pressuring Persa so that he could not make that catch, could not make that throw. 
And Lockhaven is not going to punt it. It's going to be a fake punt now. And that's going to pick up the first down and a little bit more. Lockhaven is not done with this drive. They're going to yes, take it to the California 40-yard line. And that was the kicker was number 33. Jesse Fun Unk, the punter. Or took, it, from the 39. took it and got to the a lane to the outside. Cal, you, you thought they were going to kick it away. Very Man. smart play by the Bald Eagles capitalizing on the misposition of the Vulcans. First and 10 now for Lockhaven. They are not done with this drive, and they are trying to get some type of score here. And it's going to go to Graham. He's going to be stopped at the line Dante of scrimmage. Graham, the ball carrier. And Grant, you know, looking for a lane, but once again, Matt that's that Cal U defense spot. and swarming to the football. Oh, and you wonder or why back in 2019 no they had one of the, the better run defenses, holding their, their opponents to a little under 200 yards rushing a game. Lockhaven awaiting the call. They're going to break the huddle. We'll take over at the 39 yard line of California. How you coming out in that 4-3 defense? Persa in the shotgun, feeling pressure. He's rolling to his left, still pressure, finds a receiver, and he gets out of bounds. That's number 14 on the on the catch. Chris Hicks Chris Jr. And he's able just to take that ball right out of bounds. Yeah, Actually, he did not he was not able to get out of bounds. Clock is still running. Yeah, he his knee hit it just in front of the east sideline. Line in front of us here. Here as it is a third third and and seven here for or the Bald Eagles. Cal U coming out in that four three front defense. Lockhaven trying to put the pressure on Cal. And pass is completed to Hicks Jr. yet again. He's thrown out of bounds. Looks like that was number 46 on the tackle. Trying to get a name for people. That's Hassan Johnson on that tackle. And it's going to be enough to move the chains for the Bald Eagles. Something that has not been said a whole lot during this game. Uh, correction on that one. And that was Josh Miller or on the, the tackle for Cal U. My apologies. I was looking at the, <laughs> I was looking at the wrong roster. My apologies to the folks at home listening. Persa in the shotgun, first and ten. He's gonna pass it, feeling a little bit of pressure, trying to float it to his tight end, and it is out of reach. It goes out of bounds. The ten, ten target was number eighty-nine. That's Jesse Engel, yeah. second and ten. Yeah, uh, Ursa had to get rid of it quickly he, uh, as Dylan and Boyd is, is, was in his face as he's been in for most of this game. Persa giving it to his running back, and that is stuffed up the middle. Graham getting the call on that. Back him up a few yards. Met by a herd of the defenders there. There's Gerald Brown. Uh, Boydos and Toby on the stop. Boydos and Toby e as well. Old, oh, old oh, getting to the backfield. Old oh, for or Cal U oh, and dropping him behind third the line. And 12. It's going to bring up a third and 12 now for Lockhaven. We've seen them convert on third down before, so let's see if they can do it again. Persa setting up in the shotgun. Receivers on both sides, dropping back the pass, feeling pressure, taking it up the middle. He's trying to run, get as much yards as he can. Finally brought down at the 24-yard line. Quarterback keep. Yeah, Looks like that was number 28 on the stop Not for the Vulcans. Jacob Siegel. Jacob Siegel. Oh, it was the, the defender there. Or as you go back and look, look, look on the three, replay, Persa uh, had to, find, had to uh, make some offense of it himself. Couldn't find an open receiver and had all sorts of pressure from California on him. Um, but it's still a fourth and long to go. And Lockhaven doesn't really have much of a choice. They're going to have to go for it on this fourth and nine. The ball was on the Cal U 25-yard line. Persa getting the snap, throwing it to his receiver. And he 
looks like he's just short of that first down. Yeah, take a look at the replay here. Persa uh, had a nice pass, but his receiver just couldn't keep, just could not uh, keep keep his footing. As and the Vulcans will take over on downs. And there's so actually going to be a measurement on on the field just to make sure Lock Haven got this or did not get this. And yeah, so we're going to find out here in a moment. And I personally, from right from where I'm standing right now, it looks like it's just a tad bit short of that first down marker. And uh, it, it looks close, but we're going to have the officials bring the chains out here. Here. And it looks like it's going to be e and it's short, just short by about a uh, about oh, the nose of the football, simply inches away from keeping this drive going. But it was not meant to be, and the Vulcans will take over in their own zone at about the 17-yard line. I guarantee you that was a lot closer of a play than Coach Dunn would like to have had. Yes, the Vulc. Def the Vulcan defense is lucked out on that one. And Mitchell lining up under center, single back in the backfield. He's going to roll, and that ball touches the ground before it gets to the receiver, and that pass will be incomplete. And there looks like there's a little bit of a change up in quarterback. We have number 15, Wyatt Hurt, under center now for the Vulcans. Yeah, uh, it's gonna get at the secondary guys in, and you're up big. It give Noah and the, guy, the rest of the guy uh, some time off to relax. Let them breathe and get the second string guy, um, second and third string guys some time in here. Hurt is gonna be in the shotgun. Gonna give it to his back. Looks like that's number two, Richie Skies on the carry, picking up a few yards. And it's going to be a third down for the Falcons. And yeah, Scott is, is pick, taking some notes from um, Brunson, and is he's going to power his way forward a little bit. Shortest way to point A to point B is straight through. You're not getting anywhere if you go to the outside. And as I say that, the end of the third quarter is among us. Your score, California 52, Lockhaven 0. If you are looking for a Christian club that features Bible study and spiritual nourishment, then come find your family with New Life Cal U. Swing by Oasis every Tuesday at 7 p.m. in Italy 321 to explore faith through Bible study, games, and fellowship. Or stop by Converge on Thursdays at 7 p.m. in the Natali Rotunda to make friends and enjoy life through casual hangouts. Everyone is welcome. Connect with New Life Cal U at www.newlifecalu.com backslash connect. Welcome back here to sunny California, Pennsylvania, here in Adamson Stadium, where we have the Vulcans versus the Bald Eagles. Vulcans up 52 to zero as we start this fourth quarter. Yeah, it's been all California as we get the uh, secondary guys in. And Hurt throwing the ball downfield, it's caught! It's caught, he's at the four and he's brought down. Looks like that was number 16 making the catch for the Vulcans. And that's Jack Coletti on the reception for the Vulcans, and that's going deep into Lock Haven territory to start this fourth quarter off. Yeah, good play there. There, nice catch and throw. Oh, there from um, Cal U. And the Vulcans taking over from the Bald Eagles, 35 yard line. Hurt's going to be in the shotgun. He's going to motion his man, and it's going to be run up the middle by Skies. Picking up about three or four yards on the on the carry, it'll end up being second and six. Yeah, Skies ran into his own man there. 
We need to bounce it bounce to the near side of just a little bit and to head up field who might have had, had a longer run than that. And hurt waiting the call from Coach Gary Dunn and Noah Mitchell. Noah Mitchell is on the sideline with his headset trying to communicate to the quarterback on the field. And second and seven, the Vulcans will be faced with. The huddle breaks. Hurt's going to go under center. It's going to be an ace formation for or California and a 4 3 front end for or Lockhaven. Lockhaven was trying to draw the Vulcans offside. It's going to be a run for Skies up the middle. Looks like he stopped at Might the line of scrimmage. Excuse me, that was Sykes on the carry. Gain of looks like one, so it's going to be third and five for the Vulcans. Still, still manageable for California uh, here. As the wind is starting to pick up here at Edmondson. 15 seconds remaining on the play clock. Vulcans trying to get the last touches of what they need. Hurt on the shotgun. Quick screen pass over to his wide receiver who's going to pick up the first down. And that's number 21 for the Vulcans, JT Thomas. Well, that was over to number 22, Ian Edenfield once again. Ian Edenfield. It Hold on those, the catch. Those numbers just look the same from up here. And that's not going to slow down California as they're going to get ready to run another play with a fresh set of downs. First and 10 on the Lockhaven 24-yard line. It's going to be a running play for Sykes. He's going to go up the middle, gain about five or six on the carry. And it's going to be second and five. Four. And it's going to be about... You know, Second and four. Second down and six. Four or four. Uh, or Cal U, but still, oh, oh, you're cutting, you're chopping away at the defense. You're wearing them down. You're deep inside their territory now. Oh, is where you, you go to put punch it in. And this is our first look at the second team for Cal U, so let's we can see what they're gonna do here. Going with that pistol formation. And Hart's gonna hand it to his running back Sykes. He's gonna pick up a few yards. And I think that's I think that's going to be the key to success for this Vulcan team. Just keep running that clock, keep it on the ground, nice and simple, and just to close out this game. Yeah, Cal, you're going to make a couple of quick substitutions and get some of these these other second and third string guys into the lineup up here to get some playing time. And the Vulcans faced with a third and four now, deep in Lockhaven territory within the red zone. Hurt. First passing play. He gets it, and it's an interception deep in the end zone. That's number 12 picking it off, and that's Charles Richardson. What a good read by Richardson, and taking the ball back the other way. Let's take a look at this replay. Yeah, Hurts throwing a nice ball, but oh, but uh, uh, Richardson jumped the route hold, hold, and picked it off. That's the first, first turnover we've seen Cal U have today. Hey, but Ian Lockheed will start first and 10 from about out the 26 now. I'm sure Coach Dunn won't be happy about that, but at least the Vulcans have a very cushionable lead, 52 to zero, as Lockhaven will get ready to start their first drive of the fourth quarter. Taking over from their own 26 yard line, first and 10. Passing play, he's under pressure. The ball comes out and the Vulcans fall on top of it and it's going back the other way for California. Yeah, once plays. again, and Cal U coming up with another er, bit, so big turnover. Play, Looks Step like down. number 49 jumped on that Hutchinson loose ball, John Hutchinson, and that ball is going back the other way in the California uh, knocks the ball loose as been in the name aim of it here for Lockhaven. It's been in ball security as they have turned it over three times with a fumble. A little bit of a case of the Butterfingers, wouldn't you say, for the 
Bald Eagles. So the second team for the Vulcans trots back onto the field, taking over at the Lock Haven 30 yard line, first and 10. And Wyatt Hurt under center, going to give it to Sykes. Up the middle, Sykes getting through a few defenders, picking up the first down and more. He's at the 10, the five, touchdown, California. And that's Richie Sykes up the middle, going through the defense and getting into that touchdown. Sykes, as we take a look at the replay here, or finds an open lane and start, or is bouncing off a defender, or is in a couple of his own guys. As you can see here, or goes past one, two, three defender, or gets some open lane, has a good blocker, jukes to the near side and gets nearly loses his footing and into the end zone for the score. What a read by Richie Sykes, able to find that open space and just able to break that plane and add on to this already monumentous lead that Cal U has. Kick is up and it is good, of course. And your score, 59 to zero in favor of California. You're watching Vulcan Football on CUTV Sports One on the PSEC Network and 91.9 FM. The Cal U Vulcans are back on the gridiron this fall, and CUTV and WCAL give you the best seats in the house. September 2nd at Fairmont State. September 11th versus Lock Haven. September 18th versus Millersville. September 25th at Edinburgh. Homecoming, October 2nd versus Mercyhurst. October 9th at Gannon. October 16th versus Clarion. The Coal Bowl, October 23rd at IUP. October 30th versus Seton Hill. November 6th at Slippery Rock. November 13th at Bloomsburg or the PSAC title game. All games are live on CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM, WCAL. Welcome back to California, Pennsylvania, where the kickoff is up and it is taken away after California scores to make it 59 to zero. California. Looks like the ball might have popped out here at the end. And California saying they got it, and but it looks like it's going to remain with Lock Haven. And it's Miller on the stop. Let's take a look back at that replay right there. Yeah, uh, ball almost see, coming out. Ball popped out on that one, and then that led to that. This is Sykes jumping in through defenders and then and making his way in for the score as he. He jukes jumps and jumps his way into the end zone. And now the Bald Eagles taking over from their own 35 yard line, first and 10, and there's gonna be a flag. Uh oh. Looks like there's gonna be an offside call going against. False start going against Lockhaven. Oh, I was surprised. I saw the Cal U defender I jump. I, that's what I was so, about I, to say. I saw Cal U jump, but I guess they weren't the first one to jump. It was Cal. It was Lockhaven that was jump first. I don't know if you saw the extra the uh, curricular activities going on here, or er, mm -hmm. Peyton as the uh, center er, for Lockhaven, and one of the Cal U defenders had each other er, his jerseys. He's I could have been in trouble there. Er. And another run play. Graham's going to get the call, and picking up a few yards. It'll probably be about second and 11 for the Bald Eagles. So, oh, oh, got a surprise for, for you, yeah, Peyton, as joining us now, oh, as he's got a little bit of a break from um, his internship, Nolan B. Eastline's gonna jump on the headset here. And welcome to the broadcast, Noah Beisline. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, Peyton. Great to be back here in California for some Cal U football. It's been about two years for me just due to COVID and whatnot, but it's great to see this dominating performance by the Vulcans here. We're glad to have you back here at Adamson Stadium as the ball is thrown up in the air and it is incomplete. There is a flag on the play, potentially pass interference going against the Vulcans. That pass was going to number 82 for the Lock Haven Bald Eagles. That was Kenneth Pettiford that it was intended to. We also have a little bit of change in quarterback for 
Lock Cave, and we have number 13, Samuel Barber. Yeah, Samuel Barber coming in there, trying to get that ball back to Pettit for pass interference there for the Vulcans. But, you know, Lock Haven at this point just trying to give some experience to some guys that may not play as much, you know. Mm -hmm. Being down this much, you know, you're just trying to keep developing things and not get upset about whatever may be happening out there on the field. The main thing is you just got to keep a cool head in games like this where you're just getting blown out. It's not your day. You, like I said, you just got to keep a cool head and play the game you love. And Lockhaven on the run, able to pick up a few yards into Vulcan territory. It's a stern there. Continuing just to kind of power his way throughout the Vulcan defense. Vulcan defense has their ups and downs so far, you know, for the day. You know, we've seen them where, you know, they get the sack or there's sometimes where they allow the big gain. So mm -hmm. something that I think Coach Dunn is going to look to improve going forward, especially whenever you get IEP and Slippery Rock coming up sooner than later. Those games are going to have to be almost perfect games played by Cal U. And it's number 34 on the carry for the Bald Eagles. Let's see if we can get a name on Starting that. That's Benjamin and Bay on the stop. Looks like it's a new Okamboa. Normally a linebacker. So unless possibly a jersey Third tear or something. Looks like that. They put in a linebacker, which hey, I guess that's not okay. a bad move. No. It's, not, it's not stupid. Not a bad move at all. Two-way players in high school. Well, he, he played linebacker. He, most likely, he played eight running back when he was there too. Most likely. Lockhaven on this third down, and there's going to be a timeout called here on the play. Lock Haven. On Lockhaven, it's going to be their first of the half. And just a reminder: the Vulcans will return to action here at Adams Stadium on Saturday, September 18th. That is next Saturday. And we have a little bit of a scoring update. Edinburgh and Shippensburg, the Edinburgh versus Shippensburg game. Edinburgh coming out with the loss. 30 to six, Shippensburg able to get the victory over the Fighting Scots. Yeah, the Red Raiders, always a tough team to go up against no matter, you know, sure they may not have had their winning seasons or here and there they do, but always a tough challenge. They're just kind of that brutal, hard-hitting type style of football that they like to play. Mm -hmm. So, Nolan, and I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, how's the internship been going? Uh, we haven't seen you since baseball season of last year. Yeah, uh, so, you know, internship's been going really well. Can you hear momentarily? And the incomplete pass, pass intended for number 83. That pass is Caden Bittinger, pass is incomplete. Fourth down now for the Bald Eagles. You can continue going. Yeah, but talking about internship and working at Congressional Country Club Bethesda, Maryland. Started there beginning of May. I'll be there about one more month, and then down to Florida I'll be working. So a okay. little, little bit further away from Cal PA, but make sure I make a stop back in the winter time for some basketball. You better. You don't have a choice. <laughs> Come back for some basketball and maybe a hockey game or two. Barber feeling the pressure, completes the pass, and he is hit abruptly. I believe that's number 39 of the Vulcans. Trying to see if we can get a name for that. That's Dylan Bennett sticking the Lockhaven receiver. And it's going to be a turnover on downs. Vulcans going to have the first and 10 from their own 42-yard line. Right, great defense once again by the Vulcans, and you know now we've seen more and more into this side for Cal U. Wyatt Hurt now coming in instead of Noah Mitchell, which you know for Hurt that's just going to continue to develop him. And you know we saw that a couple times two years maybe ago, whenever the last time Vulcan football was. <laughs> you know we saw Mitchell Mitchell go down. You know, and we had Hurt, and then we had. I believe we have one other quarterback, can't think of the name, but just being able to develop them, especially in games like this, no need to risk injuring your starter. Yes, and we have Sykes on the carry, previously got that touchdown for the Balkans. We all know what good vision he has. 
Yeah, Richie. Sykes. Such an elusive nine. type running back. Just kind of makes moves in and out. Almost reminds you of like an Alvin Kamara mm -hmm. type style. Just, you know, not the biggest running back, but able to gain that speed and cut around the corner if need be. And that's what you got to do in the sport of football. You got to take it to that outside and you got to beat him with speed. 7.35 left to go here in this game. Vulcans up by a lot here. 59 to 0 over the Bald Eagles. And Hurts in the shotgun. Gonna give it to Sykes yet again. Sykes cutting up the middle. He's gonna pick up that first down. He fought. Fought for that first down. And he's gonna get it. Yeah, once again, Sykes just pushing up through that midfield. Just running right through the Bald Eagles defenders right now. And you know, for the Walkins, it's definitely gaining confidence. You know, next week, you got a tough team in Millersville. But then you start getting, you know, even those tougher teams with Edinburgh, Mercyhurst, Gannon. You know, it should be an easy game, but you can never count out those schools either. Absolutely never, especially in the PSAC West. The, these teams are no joke, and they, they'll they get you if you're sleeping on them. That's why you got to play every game at 100%. Vulcans taking over on the Lock Haven 45 yard line. Handoff to Sykes. And he's going to pick up about five or six on the carry. Yeah, the and pace. that's going to be a second and looks like four for the Vulcans. Looks like we have a injured California player. A little shaken up on the play. Looks like that's number 68 for the Vulcans. That's Br Brennan Batstimber. And looks like he's able to get up off the field with himself, walking with the trainers. Hopefully he's going to be okay and he can get back into this game. Yeah, Batstimber, one of those key offensive linemen here for Cal U and it, you know, tough season. So hopefully this is nothing too serious for the Wolkins offense. We've seen a few in, uh, People get shaken up on the play, but they were able to come back. No one's been able to, no one uh, been out too, too long. Hopefully that this is the case for here. Uh, as the Vulcan offense trots back onto the field, they'll be faced with a second and four. About six minutes left to play here in this tilt. Hurts under center, single back in the backfield. Got a receiver on both sides of the ball. And Sykes just not able to get anywhere. Lockhaven reading that like a book. And it's going to be third and 10 for California. Yeah, third and 10 once again. You see that sometimes here with the Vulcan offense. Just, you know, maybe can't get through that line, but then usually find out a way to get around if it's, you know, running out of the pocket or play action type play. We've seen quite a few of those play action plays, and from what I recall, they've been working very well for the Vulcans. A couple touchdowns resulting from those as well. Go, okay, wasn't third and ten, it's third and eight. Hertz drops back in the shotgun. He's gonna float one to Sykes, and he is hit on the play. Looks like that is number fifth that's number fifteen on the hits. Trying to see, that's, trying to, um, he was hit just immediately as soon as he caught that ball, hit right away, and it's going to bring up a fourth down and eight for California. Yeah, tough play there by Hurt, just trying to find any sort of option without having to take the sack, trying to get maybe some yardage, but only able to dump it off one to two yards. We're going to see California's punt team come out. Haven't seen them a whole lot today. And the punt is up. It's going to be fair caught, and it's going to bounce into the end zone for a touchback. Yeah. Well, Peyton, it was great talking. You oh, know. you got to go already, <laughs> man. Already got to go, but always great to get back on the broadcast and make sure I get back up here. And the you know, Vulcans fans, always the best. And... You know, you get bored tonight, you can go and watch some volleyball down at the Convocation Center. Definitely. Make sure you come in for volleyball. It's been a pleasure having you, Nolan. Glad to see you again. Hopefully we see you soon and a little bit more, all right? Yeah, great having you up, Nolan, and can't wait to have you back. That was our friend Nolan Weisland and joining it, and as he's up for 
up on a break from DC for the time being. Trying to enjoy the company of him as much as we can before he leaves us again. Lockhaven on offense again. They cannot get anything going and they are stopped just behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be for a loss. Miller and Hitchin on the stop. Yeah, as you look at the replay here, Eric Cal coming up, up big. Just a swarm of defenders on the, the you know, offense of the, the Bald Eagles there. And my apologies, it was no gain on the play. I guess that's better than losing yards. Lockhaven taking over from their own 20-yard line, second and 10. And it's going to be a run up the middle, and he has some green. And that's number 34 for the Bald Eagles, picking up the first down and a little bit more. Brought down by Hillier. And that's Akumboa again. First and 10, Bald Eagles from the 34. And Lockhaven gets to their own 34 yard line. Clock is still running, hasn't really stopped this whole quarter. It's been lots of running this quarter. Set up in the shotgun, that's Barber. He's got a back to his left. Drops back for the pass, gonna float one, he's gonna catch it. And he picks up the Lockhaven first down. That's Caden Bittinger. Bittinger with a Take a look at the replay here. There as you see. He, they just drop back, back, back finds that Piper open seam. And, and he gets picks up the first down first from first down, Bittinger. And it looked like Bittinger was under a little bit of pressure there, so good on him to secure that ball and come down with it. And Barber in the shotgun, gonna give it, gonna keep it himself, gonna find a lane, he's gonna pick up the first down, and he's gonna be finally be brought down at the Cal U 40 yard line. And here we go, Lockhaven getting some positive yards. Yeah, Barber, er, as you look here at the replay, he rolls out, finds that open lane, I mean, Cal, you ooh, ooh, got pulled in on that far side of the, the uh, field. Gave Barber er, that open lane, and he needed to get the scamper for the first down. And the Bald Eagles will take over from the Cal U 41 yard line with a fresh set of downs. Barber in the shotgun, and back to his right. Uh, drop back for the pass. Quick little pass to number 10. Trying to see who that is. That is Chase Holmes. Barber's pass is Not going to be able to get that first down marker, though. Just short. It looks like it'll be Blow second it and two. Ball will be spotted at the California 33 yard line. Yeah, that's it. This is probably one of the, the bigger drives for Lockhaven that. In the, since they, they had that field goal drop attempt drive. And here he is again, number 34 on the carry. Yeah, Akumba. Akumboa. Miller and Hutchinson on And the he's able to pick up the first down for the Bald Eagles and keep this drive going. Got a minute left here, here in regulation. Score 59 to 0 in favor of California. Lockhaven just simply trying to get on the scoreboard so they don't get shut out. Barber in the shotgun. Gonna give it to Barber. give it to himself, and he is brought down by number Barber 40. Gabe Miller on the stop. And that's Gabe Miller coming up from behind and down, getting and that stop six. for the Vulcans. Lockhaven better hurry if they want to try to score or under 40 seconds. They do still have two timeouts remaining, so I want to see if they're going to use those. Ball is spotted at the Vulcan 25-yard line. Second in looks like six. Barber in the shotgun. He's looking. He's got a man open to his left. He cannot hold on to it, and that's going to be, I believe that's Chase Holmes that just could not hold on to that ball. 18 seconds it remaining into this game. Yeah, Holmes looking for the catch, but it just in and out of his hand. And you gotta look, he thought about going upfield, but turned turn too quickly for it. He had the right idea, but you gotta third catch down. the ball. And it's gonna bring up another third down for Lockhaven. 
and let's see if that they can get onto this scoreboard before the clock expires. Barber in the shotgun, drops back, looking to his right in coverage, and that ball is just out of reach of the hands of number 85. Trying to see if we can get a number on that player. Looks like it's... it's Jaden Hudson was the intended target. And it's going to be fourth and six with 12 seconds remaining. And this is Lock Haven's pretty much their last chance to get on the scoreboard. What do you think, Johnny? What do you think they're going to do here? It looks like they're going to go for it. Or it and I th you know, thought they'd have gone for the, the uh, field, pretty much an easy field goal, but with the wind blowing, then that might be a factor why they're going for it here on fourth down. The wind is definitely howling. Barber looking, throwing, intercepted. And he's just going to stick it in the end zone. And this game is practically over. Picked off by number 29. And that's Rick yeah, Raquel ha Hillfield. Raquel Hillard. Hillard. Yeah. And there's only five seconds remaining in this game. And that's just a great read by Hillard just to not even try to get out of the end zone, take it out to 20, and just take the win here yep. in Adamson. Yeah, Barber er, just threw it up there, hoping for a prayer. Aaron couldn't get it. it as Cal U's gonna send out, out, the, out the offense in victory formation, and just for that at one kneel down on to end it here. As you said, and they're going to take the knee, and this game is over. Your final score, the California Vulcans, 59, and the Lock Haven Bald Eagles, zero. Yeah, big win in and home. Oh, Cal U, U picks up the W to uh, a, a route as they, we look at the highlights here. Here, here Peyton, how things went today. Hey, starting off with of that first fumble, oh, that got uh, uh, things started for Cal U, who which led to that easy a one yard scamper er, for Brunson to get the score. We're moving forward. Word here is you take a look look at the at the replay on that one, and as Brunson and runs it in, and on the touchdown, on and then let's move on to the next one and, and where we have. Harry Jackson and and on his touchdown on oh, and Brunson again here on this one, the replay a for the touchdown and then we had the punt return earned for Jamal Br oh, Martin Jr. T gets some open field finds a few few blockers takes it it's 62 yards to the house for the score or then this one here. Here once again, and it was is Harry Jackson, and on the uh, pitch and catch from um, um, Noah Mitchell, all, all 62 yards on, or 47 yards on the score. Or as we take a look at that replay here, as Jackson, and with the a one-handed grab on that one, took it to the house for the score. For six, and then this one here, right before the, the end of the first half, of Mitchell oh, rolls out, oh, finds the open man, and and right over to to Ian Edifield for the touchdown. Oh, and then the only score of the half of of the second half, where you see here. Here's we now all getting our fourth, third and fourth quarter for stats. Ian Edifield on the up. Hold on the catch. And then we had the last touchdown on here, or as you see, Richie Sykes bouncing off defenders. There's pushing his way forward or in for for the score, or, and that was all she wrote as Cal who, who puts it, who uh, pitches the shutout out if you would, 59 uh, and nothing as Cal U who celebrates down here to our right. Hey, and we got another big one coming up next week, Peyton, as Cal U plays host to Millersville. 
Yep, that will be next week on September 11th or September 18th at 1 p.m. We will be back here at Adamson Stadium as Millersville comes to California and the Vulcans. Another win for my broadcast partner, Jonathan Sakaguchi, and everyone for CUTV that has helped. My name is Peyton Trollinger. You are watching the Vulcan Football Network on CUTV Sports 1, the PSAC Network, and 91.9 FM. Have a great day.